Welcome to episode 178 of the Current Gen Podcast. My name is Tim. I'm here with Dan. Hello, sir. Pizza time. Derek. Hey. And Rerudo Jeff. Go Ninja Go. Go Ninja Go. Hey, welcome, guys. Kyle, sorry you have no internet. That sucks. Uh, but I saw that you, he was kayaking today, so he's already better than all of us uh, on this day, at least. Yeah, that looked awesome. I didn't even That's... know that type of place existed in Colorado. Yeah. Touching grass, as the kids say. He was touching grass. He was literally touching grass. He was out there doing it. Uh, okay. So, yeah, really, really and gorgeous weekend to do that uh, up here as well. So, Oh, that's cool. I'm jealous. More, more power to him. Um, but we miss you, buddy. We'll see you next time. We are going to start things off with a little game of Kahoot. So you guys make sure you get your devices out, ready to do some. Oh my All God. right, let's get this Kahoot shit over with. And now we actually get to experience a different winner. Uh, that's crazy. That's exactly what I told Kyle. I was like, the bad news is you have no internet. That sucks. The good news is someone else will finally win Kahoot. Uh, uh, like, he's still going to win. He's still going to win. He's still, still going to still, find a way. He's still going to win. We're going to put the game pin in the chat, and he's going to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to find at a the, way to win. At the, end, at the end, like one of us will have the most points, but it'll just say uh, Kyle wins. It'll just say Kyle wins. Yeah, Kyle's our winner. Uh, just yeah, he's just the winner. Wins. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, all right. So, if I remember correctly, I just have to share my whole desktop with you guys, and then so. you should Fingers be able crossed. to see everything. Fingers crossed. Is that porn? I mean, what? I hide the smut. That gray, gray smut. It's if you're sharing it, it's just white for me for some reason, or like white, gray, whatever. I'm just getting yeah, it's gray. And also, Tim froze. Oh, did Tim freeze entirely? So it's I just okay. I just got kicked out when I tried to share. Oh. What? <laughs> That's great. Cool. Let's, let's try it again. We're very professional here. Let's try <laughs> one more time. It's still okay. showing me you're sharing like a white screen. That's really interesting. OK, now That's, we're back to not yep. sharing. And Tim is a, a ghost. He's dead. <laughs> See, this is why people make fun of us for using Skype. This is why. Probably. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> like, listen, guys. There are younger generation type systems that you can use that don't boot you out or gray screen you on everything. That's right. What are we talking about? Uh, I was uh, saying, uh, like, when I stream sometimes, like, and I bring up, like, the podcast and, like, Skype gets brought, brought up, all the all the kids are like, all right, Skype, what are you old geezers, like, they're making fun of us. All right, so let's try one more thing, and then we might just have to skip it. Oh, boy. Still gray screen or white screen or whatever? So technically, Kyle wins because he pretty much gray screened us. <laughs> this is Kyle's too. Is it Kyle's is it, fault. Is it gray it's, screened? It, it's the four uh, of us I, right now. No I, at all. Yeah, I see nothing but the regular oh. chat right now. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh. Hold on. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing something. Oh, oh I saw oh, something for a second. Ah, oh, oh. it's gone now. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> this is, this is a, dude, I don't know if I have to like uninstall and reinstall Skype because this is a disaster. Right, let's try one. Okay, second. I see something. See yeah, there oh, we go. Hey, minimize whatever it was. Okay, cool. We're good. Is it up now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is it up? Okay, good. Yep. That's what she said. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a softball for you guys. All right, so log in. Here's the pin. Kahoot died. So for you, those of you who are just listening, or if you're just tuning in for the first time, this is a nice little quiz game where I make some sort of, um, sometimes between ten. <laughs> Between 10 to 15 question thing, usually video game related about characters or voice actors or publishers. We've done those kind of things in the past. Um, we've even done like, uh, is this the name of a, <laughs> we've done the name of a Pokemon versus uh, a move from Street Fighter. Hold on, I'm trying but to think of something. Hold on. They're coming up with their names right now. So what, what they get to do is each of the guys on the podcast create a name, they log in, and then they try to select the answer yeah, as quickly as they can. And you get more points based on how quickly and accurately you answer each question. Hey, look, it's a Dapper Chocobo. It announces the winner at the end. So I'll try to read them out loud for those of you who are just listening and are not uh, watching it. <laughs> I'm literally a Dapper Chocobo. Clawfill? <laughs> More like Ballfill. Hold on. Are you trying to all get right. all sciencey on us? All right, so here we go. We got our three very interesting names. We've got Ticklish <laughs> Nifkin again. I think we've had Nifkin on before. Uh, welcome back. Nifkin. It's a good word. Thank you. Uh, we have I'm gay, bro. Um, <laughs> I'm very progressive. I think very that's uh, I think that's Spanish. And then we've yep. got I am gay. I am uh, gay. Borophil. That's racist. What I just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna start. Yeah, you said it. You Are said you guys it. ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Sorry, I was customizing my guy. I'm good. All right, here we go. <laughs> We're cahooting it up. 
here we go. The question ball is, field. is it turn-based? And oh, you're only going to oh, answer no. yes or no. Is it turn-based? Oh, here we go. Balls. All right. Metal Gear Acid. You only have two options. It's either yes or no. So turn-based, not turn-based. It is turn-based. Yes, it is. So I, I, feel I like think if... I'm dealing with a delay. Anybody else getting a delay? I'm not getting no. a delay. I got a delay. Okay. A delay um, on, what, on your device, though, it should still be. Like, you might see it. Uh, I'll try not to read the answer too quickly because you might see it a little after. But yeah. All right, here we go. Next one. All right. Number two, Final Fantasy 12, turn based or not turn based? Mm. And by the way, I tried to add little like animated GIFs. See, this is where things get weird because everybody has different. Yeah, you see, I, I mean, it is not turn based. No, I mean, it is, but that's fine. It's oh, not. It's you fine. don't have to wait for your enemy to take a turn in order to take it's a turn. It's, it's active. You can, and, you you know. can pause and strategize. Yeah. It's not turn-based. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is definitely not turn-based. All right, here we go. Uh, Actraiser, the old Super Nintendo classic. I've talked about this one before. Turn-based or not turn-based? Correct, it is not. Yeah, they released a remaster, or remake or remaster or something recently. It looked like a remake, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Remaster make? A remaster make. Remake a master. All right. So we got uh, Dan in first place by a hair over Jeff. And Kyle, if he were here, he'd be knocking this out of the park already. I'm sure. Here we go. (laughs) Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Turn-based or not turn-based? Turn-based or not turn-based for Hearthstone? It is turn-based. Yes, it's a card game. Oh, my God. What a lucky guess. Okay, sure. Yep, yep, yep. I was like, there's a reason I don't care about this game. <laughs> That's my deal. It has cards. <laughs> and it's turn-based. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> Ogre Battle, The March of the Black Queen, one of the best Super Nintendo games out there. Oh, is man, we are be strong. Turn-based. So this is like one of the only Ogre Battle games that's not turn-based. You actually have an oh, active... Okay. An active, uh, they would actually call it a real time strategy because the units are all moving at the same time. And when they encounter each other, then you go to a battle screen that plays out in real time. You can't really control mm. it, it's just based on how you set up your units. And then it goes back, and you kind of have to direct your units based on their speed. They might get there before the enemy. So it's mm. all pretty active. Um, I don't ever arch. control anybody else's units. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you don't. All right. So we still have Dan in first place. Mm-mm. No, no, that's that's Jeff in first place, followed oh, wow. by Dan, and then Thanks. Derek. Oh, Here we go. I'm upset. I'm upset. No, I will not make out with it you. It takes two. Turn-based or not turn-based? Of course, it's not turn-based. You all got that one right. Very good. Very good. All right. Same order as before. Here we go. Seventh question. Persona 5. Turn-based, not turn-based? Oh, you didn't even get, give me time to see the GIF. I, I am <laughs> No time, Tim. Oh, no wait, time. Wait, wait. Ready? Ready? There we go. Hey, there right. it is. Oh, you know what? I didn't see that coming. I didn't <laughs> see that coming. <laughs> All right. Let's see who answered more quickly. All right. So Jeff's still in the lead. Kyle would be proud. <clears throat> Here we go. Earthbound. Turn-based. Kyle, or not turn-based. It is turn-based. Yes, it is. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's one of the oldest uh it's like that first person view almost it, not yeah. just but yeah, like yeah, last yeah. year put it out on nintendo online or something yep. yeah finally yep. finally jeff's got the little fire icon beside his name i think that means he's crushing it i think that's what that means or he's on fire or he's literally on fire. or he's fire. about to burn down i'm not sure what that means actually here we go I number nine it. steamworld heist steamworld heist is this turn-based or not turn-based it ah, is ah yeah. son of a bitch i don't know I just yeah. guessed. It's a, it's a side-scrolling one where you actually take turns aiming your guns and then shoot. Uh, a little bit oh. like like, a, like uh, Worms. Remember the Worms games where you take turns yeah. throwing your weapons? Well, there's several of those Steam whatever games. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're different styles. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I wanted to make sure you guys we saw the Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, oh, the, <laughs> it's heist time. It's heist time. <laughs> those heist ones are Love good. Love that show. All right, number 10. Okay, Derek's catching up. All right, so we still have Jeff in first. Dan in second, Derek in third. Here we go. Two more questions. Number 10, Jade Empire, turn-based or not turn-based? I don't fucking know. Not turn-based. Who cares? Nope. This game is (laughs) great. Who cares? And there's Dwight doing his karate. All right, that's good. That's good. I like that. That's that question to me. Yeah. (laughs) All right. 
Did Dan take? He did oh, take the no. lead. Dan took the lead. He's up by two hundred. Although Derek, if you answer this last one correctly and quickly, and these guys get it wrong, could take the lead in third <laughs> like place. That. Everyone's within a thousand points of each other. So here we go. Last question. Might and Magic Clash of Heroes, turn-based or not turn-based? Damn it, Tim. <laughs> Nerd! It is turn-based. Let's see who answered it quickest. Oh, yeah, let's just do that, because I knew you guys were going to call me that for listing them. <laughs> nerd! Nerd! Okay. Let's see the podium. In third place, with 5,900 points, is... Oh. I, I am gay, bro. And then Borfil in oh, second come place. come on! And I know I only a hundred points faster is Dan in first place. What a cheater! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rich, Although I'm, I'm Rich, frankly I'm actually embarrassed. I should have demolished. I should have destroyed you two. You really should destroyed have. you two. There is a few that I missed that were actually absolutely ridiculous that I missed them. Like after I answered, I'm like, why are you answering that way? That was stupid. I get that I way saw... in this game where I just click. I just go, ah, uh, click. And I'm like, why? I knew the answer. Why did I do that? The the trickiest one was the Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen, which mm -hmm. is not a turn-based game, but I understand why everyone would have thought so. The That's Ogre actually Battle. the one that I actually was trying to click non-turn-based, and I clicked turn-based. Oh, that. gotcha. Yeah, actually, I sometimes when there's only two options, I don't know why, I sometimes am much more likely to click the wrong one. I don't know why. 50-50. Well, um, Hearthstone, Steam World Heist, Final Fantasy XII. Now, listen. You can make an argument that some of these games, that would include Ogre Battle March, The Black Queen, Final Fantasy XII, those are certainly super in-depth RPGs with a lot of strategy, and you can pause the, the action to kind of reconfigure who's doing what. But when you unpause, there's no, like, waiting for you to do your turn, waiting for the other person to do their turn. It's Basically, all kind of... I'm the biggest Final Fantasy fan because I got that right. Okay. That's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting. Because I actually understand what turn base means, and everyone else doesn't. So, oh, you know. got it, oh. got it. Can we boot him off the show, please? <laughs> I've been trying to fire this guy for like three years now. And now this is because you think this is a real actual job. <laughs> it is a real job. Now get down here to Orlando and fix my shit. No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. All right, well, thank you for playing. Uh, Dan, you won, even though you got your Final Fantasy one incorrect, completely incorrect. All right. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I said that there at the end. So is Final Fantasy 15 turn-based then? No, absolutely not. Then how is 12 not? How is 12 turn-based? Because there's an ATB meter, and it's all based off of a speed stat. It's all so based on a speed stat, but it's not based on your turn. But everyone it's has not. different speeds, so then different things are happening at different But you speed. could go twice in a row before the, the enemy goes. Because if your speed's sure. high enough, so it's that's all just RPG stuff. You could technically also in like say for example with the earlier ones, like in ten for example, because you can actually see your turns. If you cast like haste on yourself, right, you could technically probably get a couple turns in before the enemy. Yeah, I think that one. That one's another one where it's borderline. Like uh, I would lean. Final more Fantasy turn Twelve is exactly argument. like uh, Knights of the Old Republic, and that it always has like a default attack that's just going off no matter what. It's the other attacks that you control. So therefore, it's not turn-based. It is a I, running live action. You can move around the entire time. Derek, it's we agree. Not, it's not turn-based. Hey, let's just end the show now. Derek and I agree. Wow. Oh, All right, wait, goodbye. we're supposed to disagree. Five. Well, yeah, actually, we're, disagree we're disagreeing with Dan, so it's fine. Can <laughs> okay. we like clip this Listen. so we get go viral? About and we'll call the clip Real Final about? Fantasy Fan. Okay. <laughs> Listen, the series has been dead for a while anyways, because turn base is dead, so. Oh, that's a good and point, man. And everybody's sure. mad, so. Everybody's Hashtag mad. Hashtag so. not my Final Fantasy. I got it. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, ever since the PS2 versions, it's not been my Final <laughs> Fantasy. That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, let's talk about some new games, movie shows, things that are out. It's been a pretty busy week. Um, probably nothing monumental, I would say, on the video game front, but still some pretty intriguing releases that have come out, including a return from Telltale. So let's talk about that first. The Expanse, episode one from Telltale, is out. I know at least a few of you have played it. Uh, Kyle also played it and I think enjoyed it. What do you guys think? And are you going to be keeping up with this each week with each episode? Uh, I'm definitely going to play it uh, every every week. I'm kind of disappointed that it didn't... I don't know. I feel like they should have just released this whole thing. I don't know why they're doing it by week. Like I get it if it was like each episode and telltale used to do this and maybe the other episodes will be like this but telltale's usually most of their episodes are an hour and a half to two hours this game this first episode took me maybe 50 minutes 
an hour at the most and i tried to explore everything i wasn't like rushing mm-hmm. um but as far as overall quality i'm very intrigued by it i had not watched the show at all and it got me to watch well i'm not through the show but it got me to start the show and i finished season one um and that's 10 episodes i did that in like two or three days so i'm i i plan on going through hopefully all of the seasons but as far as like what they're doing here by the way for anybody listening uh, the show is on Amazon Prime. It has six seasons. This game, though, is a prequel to the show. So you're not required to watch the show to be able to enjoy the game. Right. They uh, want it to be, the Telltale intended it to be like a gateway for yeah. new viewers of the show, basically. But like Kyle <laughs> said in our chat, it doesn't hurt if you have watched the show because it'll Fair. help you to understand. Like, for, the first thing that I noticed when I was playing it, like, there's they're talking about groups of people and I have no idea what they're talking about. Right. But if I watch the show, which I, I did afterwards, I was like, Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I now know what they were talking about in the game. Um, because of, of the, the, the show explains that. Um, whereas the game, you're just kind of jumping in, you're meeting these characters and you don't really know what they're talking about. But uh, as far as the, the game, I thought it was good. Uh, it's Telltale. Like, the, uh, if you're looking for them to evolve into something amazing and different, I don't think you have that here. Not in episode one. You have a lot of walking and exploring. Um, but I think there's the reason I've kind of was it wasn't kind of I was excited for this game is because I miss Telltale. Um, I do like that they just kind of do we're just story based like. There's really no gameplay involved or anything like that, and I'm okay with it. There's certain games, and Telltale's one of them, where I'm like, I know what it is, and that's what I want it to be. I'm not, I don't ever play them and go, I really wish this was like an open world with action combat. Like, I don't want that. I think it <laughs> I wish this was something like, totally different. Completely yeah, I, I want it to stay focused on just being story driven, and that's all you're playing it for. Um, and I felt like they did a good job with this one with some of the decisions that you have to make, like, because I don't know who these characters are. I didn't understand everything. I'm like, I don't know. Do I want to kill this guy or do I want to keep him alive? Do I want to be nice to these people or should I be rude? Like my character, the character you play as, and that's her right there, a drummer, um, she has like her, her voice acting. She's got an attitude to her to her just in her voice acting Mm. but i tried to play her i wasn't like soft but i was not trying to upset upset all my crew members so i would get on to them but i wasn't ever i was never taking the option of being super rude Mm. but i have a feeling i should have just played her the way i would want to play her but to be honest i'm a manager and i manage that way like my inner monologue is I freaking hate you guys. You're annoying. Stop talking to me. But my outer dialogue is, yeah, that that was great feedback. Thanks. <laughs> so constructive. Oh my god. Yeah, it was so good. Good job. Pat yourself on the back. Um, <laughs> so I that's how I tried to play her, where it was like, hey, I don't want to upset anybody because I don't know who you guys are yet. Mm, right. um, but I I felt like the first episode was good. It was a good like initial episode. And again, I'm kind of hoping. This will be the shorter one because it's just an introduction. And then maybe the next episodes will be an hour and a half, two hours. Again, only if they're interesting. If it's if it's good to keep it at an hour. okay, cool. If it stays at this pace. But overall, I thought it was really good. It has me intrigued. I will definitely be uh, playing the game uh, each episode as soon as they come out. That's at least the goal. I've okay. heard the show is like really good. Like I remember yes. it was yeah. in the process of like, you know, being out like people were like, uh, this is awesome. I'm stuff. only like Derek. I've only finished. This was months ago that I did it, but I finished season one and even season one. I'm like, oh, this is better than mm, like, I don't know, 95 percent of sci fi shows out there. Like it's just okay. um, maybe 90 percent. Maybe that's a little generous, but it's just it's really thought out. And obviously they're mm-hmm. grabbing the material from the books uh, that, that they're based on. Oh, OK. And that's my understanding is that it's pr- a pretty faithful adaptation but in the final season they had to make a lot of changes 
because it was yeah, a I, I guess the, yeah, it was shortened. I don't know why. I don't know the drama behind it, but it got shortened. Either. Sci-fi. I, they were originally on Sci-Fi, spelled yeah. incorrectly. And then <laughs> Sci-Fi, after like three seasons, I think, were like, we can't afford this anymore. Go away. Right. And Amazon was like, uh, we're getting all your viewers, so come over yeah. here. <laughs> we're getting all your viewers. Yeah, we're getting all the viewers for yeah. the show, basically, after it finishes airing on Sci-Fi. So please uh we'll we'll commission the next few seasons and they they were able to wrap it up under amazon's banner um what interesting journey though that barely any shows are that lucky you know once they're canceled it's done but it's true it's true yeah uh but my understanding is season two onward is like according to kyle and like definitely other people i've read opinions on like apparently season two onward is just some of the best television ever because that's what i was gonna say like i i find season one to be intriguing yeah but there are certain things about it, like, first of all, I want to just to to set the expectations, like, to reality for people who are, like, I've never, because I had never heard of the show, honestly, before the the Telltale game came out. Um, the CGI is not very good. It's, yeah. like, it's, you know, it's a show, and it's a, you can tell it's more of a low-budget show. Some of the acting's, uh, but I think what has hooked me is... There's a lot going on, and they're really good at, like, slowly revealing things, but um, you're always moving forward. So it's not like a show where I'm like, okay, that was a filler episode. Like, that was annoying. Like, you always feel like you're moving forward, but they're not throwing too much stuff at you too fast. um, That they have me intrigued that, yes, I am going to continue watching the show so i'm excited to start yeah. season two and and then i'll if season two gets better that's great because i thought season one overall was good yeah very it's solid the greatest show that i've ever watched but if if it gets better i think that's that's awesome yeah i think i just mean from like when i praise it overly praise it it's primarily from a world building perspective but again my understanding is obviously they're borrowing a lot of that material from the book because it's built in i mean it's right there why would you make up your own world building material uh but yeah, it's does it so matter does it matter great. if i watch the show first or does it recommend it to watch the show first i know it's a prequel the game is but like does it yeah, help it helps like i mean even just season one would be like oh i know who like the belters are or i know who uh i know what, why context to what's yeah about. yeah like there's that's there's what a col- I would say. there's a colony on mars and there's there's earthers still and there's belters that just kind of you know just navigate around the asteroid belts basically and 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 Does scrap, it have a, good, like, a lot of the good stuff. telltale choice making things going on? I so far, yeah, but like Derek said, there the, was length, like the length three didn't or four, really help. You know, there's like three or four decisions you make that I personally was like, this is like this is tough. Like I'll, I, yes. I won't spoil it, but there because I won't tell you like the characters or anything. But there's like one decision where it's like you literally have to decide whether you space somebody, which means they're gonna die, or you keep them. And they they seemed important to me, even though I didn't like them. So yeah. my natural desire was to space them. But I was like, but if I space them, I ha- I have to believe this is going to be a mistake. So I actually kept right. them on on the ship. I, so I'm like, extremely concerned about that choice too, because I did the same yeah. exact thing you did. I'm like, oh, this yeah. guy is such a prick. He's just going to do the same thing again. I I don't know. I I really that's keep, the keep point. Keep like Telltale does it. a good job of making yeah. you go. So the writing is on point in that. Regard. I don't know like, which one I like, want to do. Should I have done this? Yeah. Oh no! Like I straight up punched a crew member for mouthing off to me, and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> does uh, that come back to fight me? <laughs> Jeff yeah. unhinged. So uh-huh. Jeff's basically playing like playing, how yeah, Derek would Derek, play, Derek and Walker. Derek's playing how like. Yeah. Dan, who has to do Down is up, up is down. Dogs and cats living together. And I haven't met this character yet in the show. She's a character in the show starting in season two. She starts appearing in a guest role, and then she becomes a main character as the show goes on. Um, But yeah, I hadn't met her, but I got the sense that she's a no BS type of... She starts as an XO, which is just like a, you know, commander to the cat, whatever you call it. Uh, Whatever you call the Spock's role in in the Enterprise. Um, Yeah, yeah. Second... In command, basically. She's to the, the assistant to the assistant. Yeah, she's, she's exactly. her number two. She's <laughs> but, the but number she's two. Still, two the she's season. still, like, I don't know. She had a demeanor about her that was, like, no BS. Like, every t- crewmate that she interacted with that gave her lip, I had her respond as forceful as she could. Like, okay. pretty much. Uh, short of, like, I don't know, obliterating them. I, I'm not yeah. saying I did anything like that. But I did I did, re- I did. retain her compassion. Like, there was a moment where there's a crewmate that has a, a physical, like, 
problem. Yeah, that was another big. Yeah, that was another really tough choice, too. And again, that's more of Telltale's great writing. That's like, oh, it's still there. Uh, Where I was like, no, I'm not going to have my captain lose her or whatever her name is. Drummer lose her compassion just because she's a hard ass. You know, it's not going to be like that type of run through. So, um, yeah, I made a I made a choice. Consequences. There might be consequences later, but there was definitely consequences in that episode from that decision. Yeah, because crew members kind of like Mass Effect 2 or something where like crew members will defend you, you know, and and if you if you like are going around punching people (laughs) like I am, they're not going to defend you. you (laughs) Uh, They're going to stand back and go, yeah, you're you're, I don't know about you, man. I'm going to take this guy's side, you know, so there's a moment later on that it comes back and you're like, oh, no, did I do everything wrong? But the story, I mean, that is the hardest part about being in charge is like finding that balance of because if you are too soft, you are read as being weak. Yeah. Um, So if you're always trying to make it about the the team members or, you know, you know, whatever staff, whoever you're managing, even in real life, if you try to make it all about them, you are weak and you're a pushover and they'll take advantage of it. But if you're too hard you'll become where to the point where they don't like you. So it's like finding yeah. that balance. And that's how I play these games. I'm like, how do I find that balance of yeah. where I'm not soft and weak with these people, but I'm not also overly abrasive where they absolutely hate me. Yeah. Now, after watching the first, uh, first season of the show, I will say this, and this is if Tim wants to jump in without watching the show to kind of give you context. While in general, the people on the show are, like, kind of nice to each other. They're all kind of how Drummer is in her tone in this, sh- in this game. Yeah. And that is, they're no-nonsense, and they don't have a problem being an asshole to each other. Like, it's not Star even, Trek, basically. It's not yeah, like Star Trek. It's like, let's even just go you, explore, guys, and hold yeah. hands. <laughs> even, if you're like, even if they're, like, lower <laughs> ranked, they'll talk to you like you're a piece of crap. They don't care. So if I could replay it and redo it, I would probably have been a little bit more like, you know what? I don't give a crap. At least there's time because it's an hour long playthrough. I mean, you know, at least there's that. But also, yeah, there's like your pilot, for example. Uh, As soon as I got the hang of the dynamic between the pilot and the character you're playing, I was like, oh, I'm going to be rude back to her. Like, I'm going to feed it right back because she is so freaking mean. Uh, and it, it's very funny, though. Um, Sounds like there's... Succession in Space, based on what you guys are saying about that show. <laughs> in a way. Succession in Space. Less, less dirty name-calling. Station. It's like, you know, making sex jokes and calling you names or whatever. Uh, less of that, but they're definitely rude to each other, and even in their own, like, dialect, uh, which I think Belters... Is it Belters or Martians that have their own, like, language? Um, anyway, that's another interesting... the Martians. Part. Yeah, I think it's the Martians, but it's another interesting part of the lore. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the con, the pilot is just so funny. Uh, the minute you walk up to her, she's like, can you like go away? Like she's immediately. <laughs> go. And then there's a part where you call her later to be like, Hey, I found this thing. You might be interested in it. And, it's, and you're gonna, you can tell that you're going to offer it as a gift at some point. But she responds with the best gift you can give me is stop calling me or something like that. And I'm oh my like, gosh, never mind. <laughs> I that is you, amazing. I, you know, a token of being here, but never mind. It's, I don't want to talk to you anymore. It's, it's probably more realistic compared to Star Trek because everyone's like, we're stuck in this cramped space. We do this yeah. every day. We're just Ships tired, not, like sick and not, tired like, of this. Like, it's a utopia in Star Trek, right? Where you, right. I mean, granted, they are dueling with nuanced issues, in some cases, right. world ending issues. But and it's not the same like dusty not Western, that. like Firefly, where everyone's kind of sarcastic and snippy. Not right. snippy, but like they like snap and wise cracks, but they're all kind of yeah, they're wise shit. crackers. Yeah, the wise yeah. This one is definitely stuff. more focused on class classism, and you can even see it in some of the ship designs where you're like, oh, this is not this is not a good looking ship, yeah, and yeah. and they're very much close That's quarters and stuff. Man. Yeah. Um, and there's it's once a week for these episodes, right? To every two weeks, uh, every I double check that. Yeah. Okay, so it'll it'll wrap up in September then. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then there's a, I think Derek and I and Kyle all got. Episodes. The deluxe version, which includes a episode about Christian, who was a character from the show. Um, she's like a deep voice. She's been in many things. She's yeah. got like a deep voice. I think like she's, she's in like Knights of the and Old stuff. Republic and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I think she is. Nice. Nice. But yeah, she's, you uh, definitely will recognize her voice as soon as yeah. you hear and then you'll if you like, yep, like, oh, her. Oh, yeah, I know who yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. I'm like, I've heard this voice before. And then, yep, 
it's absolutely someone. Her voice shows up in the game for like a split second. Well, that's that's exactly what I was putting in the chat. Like, I think it's episode like four or five. They introduce a new character into. I'm talking about the show, not Telltale, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. And as soon as he started talking, I was like, "Oh shit! Let me go check." And I and I go look it up. I'm like, "Yep, that's my boy, Adam Jensen." I was like, "Holy crap! He's an actual Uh actor in the show." Yeah, so it's pretty cool. cool. He's ac- actually in the show a lot. That's nice. cool. Is that Holden? Is that who you're talking about, or is it? No, no. Um, I forgot his name. He's actually in. A, he's it, actually literally Jensen. in the last scene of the show. Oh, okay. Okay. Of, of season one or of that episode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's like the cliffhanger. Something happens to him. Okay. All right, well, so oh, in we two weeks, we'll hear from you guys what you think about episode two. Hopefully it continues and improves on the, the quality that you've experienced so far, which is which is cool. I'm glad to hear Telltale is back. Because really, it's not about the, necessarily the gameplay being anything Ken, special. Kenzo. All about the writing and, and characters, right? And so it sounds like they're they're nailing it. Yeah, awesome. like, uh, as far as gameplay, like, again, it's not it's telltale. gameplay. It's more Telltale, yeah. yeah. But what I was going to say is, it's just, I feel like everything moves faster, and it's yes. a little bit cleaner, so it's not clunky like you're used right. to with their older stuff. Walking Dead a was little pretty bit clunky. Smooth. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit well, smoother. That's what happens when you're not doing, like, 30 projects at the same time. Oh, dude, yeah. Yeah, when you're actually fo- able to focus, especially Deck Nine. Who dude, was a, I remember when they were, like, announcing Telltale type stories. Batman, Guardians, Game of yeah. Thrones. In the same year. Land. Yeah. It's like, stop. And you're like, what? Uh, <laughs> that was that was not understanding that, like, yes, people like you, but we actually will hate you if you, you're you around too much. Like, yeah. Right, hey, exactly. That's oversaturation. You're a little over-aggressive girl right now, and I need you to <laughs> back like, off a little bit. crazy so big guy girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there is actually a segment, a chunk of the game, a chunky slice for sure, uh, where you're doing, like, space walking, and you're, like, having to use your boots to propel yourself and float around and i'm like i don't remember any of the other telltale games being able to do this that mm. smoothly where there i feel like, like i can few, kind of go like, in every direction you know shooting sequences and things yeah. like that but nothing this one is like no you're fully walking around and then you're sh- launching yourself into space and like flying around space and i'm like that's cool I like what? That. what i'm doing this in a telltale game that was kind You're of like cool. who needs starfield when we have this yeah that's, <laughs> that's pretty much uh, yeah, I starfield everybody that's why i i was uh i'm not i'm never gonna play dead space again this is a better <laughs> version of dead space this is better dead space yeah okay. let's not go you're here gaston that's the facts right yeah there. suck it gaston <laughs> you piece of All crap right. why don't you play All something right. else well, uh, another, I mean, at least as far as the IP goes, pretty major game. Not a, not necessarily a major, like, experience. is Disney Illusion Island. So it's out on Switch only, I think, at the moment. When I, I double-checked that today, I was like, this is not, on nothing else? At, not even on PC? So I think it's on, only on Switch, where you can play yeah. Disney Illusion Island. Switch exclusive. Um, so I played this uh, multiplayer the other day, uh, yesterday, with my kids a little bit. Played a little bit single-player, but mostly multiplayer where we get to be mickey Minnie, donald and goofy uh the cut scenes all have voice acting it's all the voices you remember and maybe you loved i don't know i liked disney cartoons growing up for the most part yeah. um although i mostly remember them being like short so like i don't remember watching a ton of full-length seasons or movies uh, maybe right. a few oh, that's what it was yeah they would be yeah, like it was, like, sh- was kind of like looney tunes it was like five minute chunks. It'd be like a little short chunks. in between like yeah. uh saturday morning cartoons you were watching or something like right right um but anyway it was all the voices that i've heard plenty of times and and so i don't know who the guy's voice actors but they all did a great job it's very very right. silly very saturday morning cartoon jokes um where goofy doesn't get it donald doesn't want to be there mickey and minnie are like overly eager to be helpful and friendly to everybody it's, it's all that stuff that you know from from these characters donald the rageaholic donald's totally just mad because he got trait. he gets really mad really quick and he's just angry that he got fake invited to a picnic that's not happening <laughs> uh so that's pretty <laughs> funny to me the uh, look of this one too is more it's more based off of the newer shorts so there's actually a new they started like a few years ago oh i didn't uh, know that i didn't know that yeah, Disney, cool. yeah yeah and it's that's what like the look of them in this game is based off of although it's like a modern take on the classic design kind of it, that is, yeah yeah it's a mixture of yeah. both things yeah but goofy i i think maybe they didn't do it in the game because it's kind of like i think it almost became like a meme goofy in the shorts straight up looks like a crackhead <laughs> oh my god straight up looks like a crack. I'll, I'll i'll send a picture i swear to yeah, god yeah no he looked kind of like normal classic goofy to me yeah he just looked like goofy yeah, yeah. To me, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah in the game um, so as far as the gameplay goes, like people have called it like Metrovania for kids, and 
I don't even like, yes, definitely. That's a good, that's an apt comparison. It's super, super simple. You have very limited uh, move sets, at least at the beginning. You unlock things like double jump and stuff like that as you go. Um, but it is uh, very, very easy, very simple, very kid friendly. And it's, th- it's that way on purpose. It knows its audience. Um, mm-hmm. It's super forgiving when you have four of you on screen at once. Like I've played four player side scrolling games, even Mario. We've talked about how Mario is the king of platformers. Mm. But when you play four player or even just two player Mario, you can start a legit fight in a living room because you can like knock each other off the edge and steal the item you need and like all that stuff. So this is one of those games where you share everything and you can't really hurt each other and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh my oh, god. Dude, that's what go- that's what Goofy looks like. <laughs> it does look like a crackhead. That's so insane. Good lord. I'm telling you, that's why they changed it in the game because I think people oh. were like, "What the hey, f is Mario, going on? You want to oh. get high?" <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, when when each player logs in, like, and each of them, like, if you're playing, for example, as a parent with the kid, you could give yourself anywhere from uh, three hearts, two hearts, one heart, or be invincible. And but you could also you can pick something separate for your kid. So if you wanted to play the game and like, hey, three hits and I'm dead. But my little kiddo barely plays games. Let's just have them have a little invincibility heart. They can't die. And so they'll still get knocked back and stuff, but they won't die. So it's, again, it's making it super approachable, very family friendly. Um, it's very floaty. So it's, mm. it's not one of those things where I'd be like, hey, this is a super precise, amazing uh, platforming experience. Like, no. Well, they probably did that to compensate for like the accuracy for kids, right? If it was like yeah. too accurate, then they it probably feels it feels different. more like Rayman, and that's true. I think that makes it more yeah. approachable. Your character kind of floats as you jump, and mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's it's fine. I understand why it's getting the scores that it's getting. It's getting kind of those above average scores, you know, or somewhere between above average and good. I think somewhere in the swimming in the sevens. Totally le- a legit score, I think, for this game. So it's pretty good. It's worth it for me because it'll be another fun one along with Ember Knights to play with my kiddos. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was actually kind of fun because we had a couple of their neighbor friends were over and one of them says, well, I don't really play games. And I just gave her my controller and she played. All you have to do is move left and right and jump. Like it's one button to hit. So yeah. within a few minutes, it was actually kind of adorable. Within a few minutes, she's like 10, I think. She was going like, this is so fun. I didn't think this would be so fun. She kept saying how fun it was. And <laughs> My older sons who play a ton of games, they were like, can we go play Minecraft again? Like, I'm, I'm kind of done with this. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, definitely I'm good. little kids friendly or non-gamer friendly. So mm-hmm. anyway, but I love the art style. I love the way it looks. The music is amazing. It's so pretty. Uh, it's just kind of like very orchestral, fun Disney score. And I, I just like, man, this is really good music, too. So. There you go. There's my take on it. I don't think anyone else played it yet. Jeff, and well, I, I, I was able to play it. Uh, the The movie I saw today ended very much earlier than I thought it would because there were no trailers. Oh, so okay. um, I was able to get home and, and put some time in on it. But I didn't get much further than what you were talking about, where you get the double jump. Okay. And yeah. that's about it. And I was playing as Goofy. Um, yeah. I think it's really funny that there's like opportunities to play is with four players i'm like why 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 would you do that yeah. i don't it so makes no I, you're not fighting anybody i don't understand not yet at least i don't know if you do yeah I'm, does, i haven't like, seen any like battles uh yeah i'm sure there are but i haven't seen I think it's just so you can have like if you have a bunch of kids together it's just everyone yes. can get in on the like there's a big <laughs> locked door and it's like oh no how to get through this door you literally go on the level right above it and there's a key sitting there it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, ah, there it is. <laughs> it's almost like Dora. It's like, where should we put the key? And they wait for the audience to like say, "In the door." Like, it's like five right. minutes later, she's yeah. just staring at you. Like, where is it? Where Where do we put it? Uh, anyway, so there you go. That's Disney Illusion Island. It's I think successful in what it's trying to do, and like yeah. we talked on the show a lot. You can't really criticize something for doing what it's trying to do. Like, it's just trying to be a super family, especially young kid friendly cartoony platformer that's very accessible and we have so many games right now that are not super accessible they're like super tough they'll push you to the limits with its challenge something like this sometimes is a nice break a little bit uh i i am pretty sure none of us played the new double dragon gaiden rise of dragons game that's a lengthy title too um kind of looks like the river city games a little bit i i've never been a huge fan of that art style of those games are i know are a blast Mm. uh, especially if you've got co-op to play with um it's just a it looks like a nice throwback to that style of game i just two things one i don't love the art style but i can get over it. it's not bad um it's just a choice um i'm also just not in the beat em up mood where you just run around and kind of button mash to hit it. and i know there's combos they added some things to it i'm just not really 
currently feeling that style of game personally. But um, I think the reviews on it are also coming back in that middling. Yeah, it's like it's Illusion a, Island. It's, it's mid. I, it's mid. Yeah, it's yeah. mid. So, but we can't really say much else about it other than what other reviewers have said, what it looks like to us, because none of us have played it. Let's talk about some movies real quick that have come out in a couple shows, too. I want to get your thoughts. There's a lot of video game related stuff, or at least kind of like nerddom related stuff that has been dropping mm-hmm. recently, which is a lot of fun. This has been a good year for that. Uh, first up, there's an early screening for two of you for uh, the Ninja Turtles movie, which I think Dan, you and I are both talking about going to see it. Uh, you're probably looking at next weekend like I am, too, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I haven't like picked the day. I actually have this this week off coming so uh, coming up, so th- oh, nice. that actually would be probably smart to do. I that. think yeah, it comes out on it. Wednesday because you, so you can go oh. weekday if you want to. Yeah, go. you could even do a weeknight. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it said August second on the release date, but I could be wrong. On that. Um, I thought it was the fourth, like Friday, but it could be the fourth. Uh, could be wrong. Um, oh yeah, you know what? I think I do remember they moved it before back back meaning earlier. Yeah. Uh, a couple months ago, they were like, no, you know what? Let's put it out earlier so they can catch, like, get a bigger box office, I guess. And kids are still, most kids at least, are still on summer break. So this is a good one to have uh, during see, the day. I see the yeah, there were so many kids, and I mean really young kids, Yeah. in my showing today. Like toddlers and stuff. Uh, it was clearly meant for, like, whereas Barbie was, like, 10 and older. Yeah. Mm. Maybe 12 older. Right. This one was definitely, like, 3, 4 you know. This is rated PG, right? It's like a kids. It's a kids movie, right? Yeah. Um, PG, yeah, it's I was gonna PG, say, be but there are some parts movie, right? where I'm like, only people my age would get that joke. What What are they doing? Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> what would you guys think? Overall, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really yeah. good. Yeah, it was. The, really my good. My only issue with the, I had a couple issues. One was, uh, this is just me personally. Obviously, I expect other people to like it, but. I didn't really like the art style, and I oh, thought bummer. I thought it hurt like the combat oh. of the of the movie because a lot of it was just like, "What? What's going on?" Um, but here's what I really, really like that I didn't know I was gonna like as much as I ended up liking, and that is, I thought the casting of the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was flawless. Whoever these little, little kids, kids like who we don't really know most. Yeah, whoever like these 13, four kids are, yeah. <laughs> were perfect. It was almost like they were filming. They're like, "Hey, you guys just hang out for three nights together, <laughs> and we're just kids. gonna film oh, how awesome. you guys would act." Yeah. If you guys were just hanging out for three nights in a row that's together, so cool. and that's yeah. that's what I, the vibe I got, where they were just. I was giggling the whole time, and I don't know if the girl next to me was really cute, and I should have looked to see if she was cute, because I was extremely attracted to her laugh. It was so adorable. She was just like, <laughs> it was so cute. But anyways, like... It was a thousand they, percent they, a man. Keep going. <laughs> they had her, like, laughing the entire what time, which made, which <laughs> made me twist. enjoy it even more. But they, they just had a bunch of, like... It never felt like try hard humor like let's try to be funny it was just they probably like they had were... the four of them like hang out before because they do that sometimes right they'll get like the cast just to be they probably did and i bet they were in the booth together when they recorded their parts yeah 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 it felt like right. a lot of their lines were on top of each other the chemistry it was on top of each other yeah. and it was a lot of it was like it was just real like i remember with my yeah. friends we were always talking over each other and whatever <laughs> we heard we were reacting to so if one if somebody said something stupid the other three would hear it and then they would immediately jump on them yeah and that's what this was a lot of it was leo would say something and the other three would be like you're an idiot and then they would just yeah. go in <laughs> right uh, but that's the part of the movie that made me go, this is a really good movie. The other thing that I that surprised me, I don't like, uh, I believe it was Ice Cube. It may have been Ice Cube. It's Ice Cube's in it. Yeah. 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 He's, he's super pain. fly. He's yeah. super fly. Somebody. I'm cast right now. Yeah. I don't usually like him, but he was funny in this movie, too. I liked how Very. he reacted to everybody because you've yeah. got. He's just surrounded by a bunch of silly characters, and he's just like... He's so annoyed, probably. Yes, Are you yeah, serious? Yeah. Are yeah, you guys it. really <laughs> saying this stuff? It sounds like him. It just sounds yeah. like him. Like, yeah. yeah, that's all it I is. Actually, it's him reacting to how... He seems annoyed everybody. in everything that he's right. ever been yes. in. Yeah. That's, that, my favorite role of his is not that there's a lot to pick from, in my opinion, outside of like Friday. But uh, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street is like my favorite role of his, non, like just without question. Because he is... 
immediately as soon as Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum walk into the uh, Korean Jesus Church, he is immediately like, shut the hell up. Shut up. Yeah. Do what I say. Like, he's immediately, <laughs> it's so funny. It's the funniest dynamic. Um, but yeah, he kind of carries a lot of that same energy, I guess, in, into the Superfly role. Yeah. And uh, Paul Rudd's character is hilarious. He's the surfer. Probably In the trailer, played. he seemed like he might be the funniest. He's like a he's like a surfer kind of guy who who mm. gets along really well with Michelangelo. He had like uh, manic energy in the trailer, at least. So I don't yeah, know. he's not in it a whole lot, but this the yeah. couple there were a couple uh, interactions that he had where I was like, okay, that's really funny. Like, and you could tell it was Paul Rudd because he was a very wholesome character and like trying sure. to be sure. very like uh, br- like I don't know California. That's the yeah. best way I can put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's yeah, really funny. He, and, uh, yeah. The dialogue was, was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I, I found a lot of humor in it. Yeah. And I, again, I'm not saying like that all the art style was terrible and that the whole time I was like, I can't look at this movie. It's a strong art style, so I could see but it. But it was not out. what I, it's not like my personal taste where I'm like, oh, that's cool looking. I looked at it and went, this looks gross. There's a lot of like gross stuff. Like I was looking at one of the scenes where they're like driving at night and so you have all the lights, you know, on the street, and all the lights are is just yellow ziggity lines. It's supposed to give it like a comic book. I'm assuming yeah. it's probably like, an but it's homage. just like really I ugly. Think it to be more like graffiti for some reason. I don't. Yeah, know it's like ugly too. drawing yeah. and like almost like um, kids like trying to color, but well, not. Well, the actual animation in the trailer at least looked almost claymation style the way they move yeah i was gonna Sometimes. say it's almost comic booky slash claymation like almost yeah. like it's like they're definitely trying claymation. to do their their own version of like a spider verse yeah. type which has a very distinct animation um, style it does but, but, yeah. but like, like the just, comics go like back just into picture, the comics do, his yeah. background yeah. that mm-hmm. looks pretty cool the yeah. game looks or the game the the movie looks more grainy and dirty to me than that that looks clean and clear but it's yeah. like it's a little bit dirtier but that's the only thing I didn't like. Uh, mm. Other than that, I thought the plot was decent. I mean, it's TMT, TMNT plot, but it was yeah. decent. But to me, what made it really good was the execution of the characters, the dialogue. Well, and they had a lot of characters. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a lot of villain characters, and they most of them were funny. They, yeah. they weren't in it a lot, but when they would drop little lines and how they were interacting with the uh, <laughs> yeah. Danique, the turtles i was like this is crazy and then in the beginning the rat splinter uh, yeah splinter was okay he wasn't like really oh, funny sure. at first but then as the movie went on he had some god, great lines jackie. that i absolutely love you know, dude so, i forgot yeah. it was jackie oh my god <laughs> he's so funny dude the one thing i, 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 I love it when like i think donatella says hey man you ratted us out and jackie chan goes don't use that word <laughs> <laughs> so that's so funny. Oh, that's funny. I like that. Uh, when we went to see uh, Barbie this past weekend, they showed a bunch of trailers. Of course, so many trailers. Uh, they showed the Expendables Four trailer, which looks absolutely awful. Like I'll be shocked <laughs> if that movie is worth any. I've seen that trailer way more than I ever wanted to. And I know, like, man. I know. You know, I because it, because I'm in the theater so much. They showed it before fault. Mission Impossible yeah. as well. Is that just uh, taking place in an old people's home? Like, I mean, what's going on? Like, no, because a lot of the cast are relatively like mid to unknown people. That and so like at, you know at the end of the Expendable trailers they always have like the metal style font where yes. it slams into the screen all the names and it with used names, to be yeah. like Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Gibson like all the like Van Damme, Van, Van Damme. Yeah. like it was it actually kind of I remember the first one especially was like oh Whoa. yeah right yeah, yeah the second one was kind of like oh, okay cool and the third one I was like what's happening yeah, here it was then, like, what are you now the list like I actually laughed out loud and they showed the list. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, of last names and then I'm not kidding right after that trailer was a TMNT trailer and they do the same thing they don't slam it with metal style but they still just show the last names of the cast yeah. it's so much more impressive it is so much <laughs> it's such a cooler list of names even doing this the list, even though the, the characters are I'm sorry the actors that are involved a, a lot of them are just getting like one line or two like especially sure. the mutants it's that are main in list. the movie yeah. don't really say a lot like yeah. some of them don't like John Cena's character He's one of the two Bebop or Rocksteady, the Rhino. Rocksteady, yeah. Uh, so he, I mean, you uh, couldn't see him in the movie. Anyway. Says, yeah, you couldn't even hear him anyway because you can't see him. So if you can't yeah, see him, you can't yeah. hear him. Um, <laughs> but like Seth Rogen, even though he's like a writer in it, but like he he was great as Be- he was so funny as Bebop. But he, and I say that even though he only had like three lines that I could hear that I can remember. Like I mean, yeah. he's not talking a whole lot. That's it's the thing with the, about the turtles. It it's mostly like. about the turtles and Superfly. 
and yeah. Splinter, their dynamic with Splinter and their whole philosophy on are humans good or not? Because that's the whole mm. that's it. the whole moral, I guess, that's center cool. of the movie. Is that's cool. is at one point Splinter was like mistreated or whatever, and he's like humans suck. So like you know that's the whole moral center of the movie is about that. And uh, man, they really tackled the hell out of that. They they really I, I thought they hit a home run with that aspect of it. And uh, nice. I my eyes just kind of got used to the animation. Like at first I was like this is different. And then my eyes got used to it, and sometimes I actually really liked it. Uh, but I, I can't go fully on board with saying I love the animation style. Um, and actually, there was a montage where they're doing like a fight scene where they're trying to get intel on whatever the mission is, and um, and they're, but they have to fight like multiple like uh, what do you call them mobs, I guess. Sure. So the so the montage is them like fighting them almost like all at the same time, but like the way that the camera's cutting is like. It's like they're doing the same fight, but like it's the environment is changing behind them and the enemy uh -huh. is changing. It, the way that it was edited was just really clever. When you see it, you'll be like, oh, that was cool. And Thanks. they're fighting to no diggity for some reason. There's some really weird <laughs> why not? drops. In the movie. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of like Mario. You're like, why are they using that song? Whatever. Ninja Turtles makes more sense to use. It makes more song. sense here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're, 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 even though they're in the sewers, they still like stole stuff like stealthily that helped stay them up afloat basically on pop culture. So like they're aware of all the references. They say stuff like sus. They say stuff that like teenagers uh, now say. Uh, yeah, so I mean they're they're very So my kids hip. are gonna love this movie. So I'm like oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. So much my, my wife's now. on the fence. She's like, I don't know if it's worth paying a babysitter because she didn't love the art style just from the trailer. She was like, I feel like it's gonna hurt my eyes. I don't know like Yeah not not all the adults are gonna like that. I don't honest. know. So she's on the fence. She might go with us if we get a babysitter for our youngest two. If not, it'll just be me and the kiddos. Uh mm -hmm. either way, we're gonna be seeing it. Um I, I think, did uh, by the way, Ao Edaberry Edaberry uh who played Sid in the bear, she's April O'Neil in this and right. um I just right. like her as a voice actor. I think she's just like I don't know. She's kind of a natural at it, and she's got a good, she's a good actor. Timing. She's, she's, she's with her line delivery. She's yeah. just got good com like comedic she's like, a, timing. She's a know? core piece of that bear show. Like she yes, helps make yeah. that show what it is. Yes, Stop chef. Um, yes, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Uh, I finished up part two of The Witcher three season three, and uh, uh, listen, that that continues to be pretty good. <laughs> Listen. I was expecting. I can't wait for Liam to show up because this is terrible. <laughs> something like that, like something. <laughs> no, I'm certainly not in the can't wait for Liam to show up camp. I'm not that. They got cabs. I don't know if right? that camp exists. Yeah, I, I know, know right? Exists. <laughs> the only person exists. excited about Liam being there is going to be Liam, and even he can't show excitement. So. <laughs> Um, He's like, guys, how do I show I, excitement? I mean, I guess I'll be what's careful. the happy I, face? Never... <laughs> Where's my brother? Bring him in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, I am Miley so, Cyrus's ex boyfriend. Did you see that video of Woody Harrelson not knowing Liam was related to Chris Hemsworth? No. <laughs> no. You haven't seen that? Like, somebody in an interview was like, uh, Yeah, your brother's Thor. That's crazy. And Woody, in real time, you see him going, What? Hold on. <laughs> You're related to Chris? <laughs> I don't feel I don't feel like they look very I actually think I all three of the brothers look very, very different. There's small similarities, but like a lot they're of all times, they're all brothers, handsome Australians. I don't, I, that's all I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you're right; they don't look like they don't look. But one like, in particular got thing. the good looking yeah. jeans, and the other two are yeah. one, Liam's. He's decent looking. Yeah. The other, the older one's not as good looking, but the, there's clearly one who got now, the. Really and not only good did he get all the the looks, but to me, he's by far the best actor. Like he's got range. Oh, yeah. He's funny. He has, so, he's, he has he's, such range. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Um, so I did, I did finish, uh, part two of season three. I, I won't say too much about it. I don't want to spoil it in case you're really into it. I will say this, like as someone who has, I think I've gotten through three of the books. I was talking to Jeff about this, like a few of them audio style. So sorry if that doesn't count for folks. Uh, and I've, and I've played all three games. I really like a lot of the stories. I like a lot of the characters. I've, I've, the Witcher three is one of my favorite video games and it helps that I really like the lore and the world that, that it's set in. Um, the show I thought overall has done a pretty good job of bringing that to the screen. I don't want to be like a negative Nancy. I really don't. But I certainly, I, there's a lot of moments that I kind of roll my eyes at whatever the thing is, like what they're doing. It's hard not to. When you're a big fan of a source material and yeah. you see it brought to screen, it's sometimes hard not to be like, oh gosh, they're doing it this way. Okay. Like it's hard not to do that a little bit. Um, and I do think the show, sometimes the writing does feel a little bit lazy. It's a little bit on the nose trying to explain things to you, but then they don't explain other things. I'm like, if I didn't read the book, I wouldn't have known who that 
king of that kingdom was. Like, they need to explain this to most viewers. So I would imagine a lot of viewers are going to get confused and annoyed. Um, so you know I don't know. I wanna, it's I hard for me to say this of... is an excellent show, but I still kind of enjoyed it, and I think the fighting scenes are pretty great. Still pretty fun mm-hmm. to watch. So I want I want to hear less from people behind the scenes. Like, here's what I mean by that, and this actually has to do with The Witcher. That's why I'm bringing it up. So I thought you were just like, done hearing about it, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> like the cast, the cast, like yeah. the casting to me has been pretty terrible for a lot of the characters. Some of them, it's it's fine, whatever. It's but been then hit or miss. You, I agree with that. It's but when miss. you have yeah. like the people that are behind who picks the casting coming out and saying their agenda of why they do everything, I would rather they just shut up and do it. Like, go ahead and do your little thing that you're trying to manipulate people with. Like, we know what you're doing. We're not stupid. Just do it. And then don't talk about it. To me, it hurts the show when you, when you know somebody's deliberately do, making decisions based off of like race, uh, sex, gender, all that stuff, and they're not doing it based off the actual source material. Again, I'm not talking about like a white character must be white. I've never been that type of person. I'm talking about when you're just doing it and then you're coming out and saying, this is exactly why I do it. It hurts the show for me. I see what you're like, saying. I'd rather you just shut up and I know you did it and I just ignored it than actually know that, that you were really doing it. Like, you know, I a good example know. of that is the Ninja Turtles movie that we saw because April O'Neil is not the April O'Neil I grew up with. Uh, no, they just cast it. her and she's movie. great. They just cast her and said, hey, it was great. She's a great voice actress. And they've and... gotten pushed back on it, but I'm not one of them. Yeah, but they're not I in front seen... of the media going like, there you go. Here's exactly why we did this there because you go. X Y right. Z, and we yeah. deserve brownie points, please. I see, Derek, I, I see would... what you're saying. I and I do think you're right. The, I I would say the casting is probably like seventy five percent. I've been like, hey, that's a pretty good cast for that. And there's been some of them that look way different than they're described in the books or that they showed in the game, and it's worked out great. Uh, there's yeah. a really key character um, named Vilgefortz who's played by an actor who I remember from that. Remember the Marco Polo show that got canceled on Netflix. Yeah, he play he plays like a key like advisor role in that show. I kind of like I've seen that actor before. I like him a lot. He's kind of got this. Um, there's something always b- beneath the surface of what he's thinking. Um, he's a really he's really good at conveying that. Um, anyway, and I thought he was a great cast. He doesn't look at all like they describe in the books, but mm-hmm. it's totally fine. Like he he crushes that role as Vilgefortz. There's other characters, and I've talked about them before. Some of the sorcerers, and specifically that they cast, that I'm like. They're not even like great actresses. I don't know why they're here. Like this is this. Is, and if, honestly, there were times when I'm not going to say any of them because I don't want to make it sound like I'm I was like pinpointing certain performances just to see are they good enough to be here? Like I wasn't trying to do that. But some of their performances stood out like I was watching a WB medieval drama. It was yeah. really cringy moments. I was like, oh, like that. In some ways be- you are. I think Netflix is operating on that kind of budget nowadays. <laughs> I mean, yeah, which was crazy because there were some moments that it looked like a WB medieval show. And then some moments it looked like some of the best CG I'd oh, ever yeah, seen. Yeah, like, oh, that's where all the so money it's, went. Oh, it's okay. super it inconsistent. All over the place. It's yeah. super inconsistent. Like, there's a really yeah. cool scene where a character has two, two of your protagonists cornered, and then a sword is thrown, and then behind that person, you didn't see them, is another character who grabs it and, like, slides. It's just such a cool, well-shot scene. And then right after that, you have a super cheesy moment where they use this shield to block fire, and it looks really cheesy. So, like... It's I don't know, man. It, it, it's a very hit or miss show. I've enjoyed it, though, overall. I really liked uh, Henry Cavill's run as Geralt. I can't heartily recommend the show to people who aren't already big fans of The Witcher. Although, if someone were to ask me, do you like it? I'll say, yeah, I liked it. Is, it's not um, my favorite, but I liked it. Is there a way to very vaguely, generally answer how like this ends with him not being on the show anymore like is it nonsense or is it like fine there is, or... there is nothing to indicate if i didn't know the news there's nothing to indicate to me that he won't be on the next season sure okay it was that kind of ending where it's like got it they actually ended it at i thought a very weird spot um there's a book called baptism by fire that that talks about the aftermath of this huge uh kind of coup kind of a their red wedding type moment that happens mm. Um, in Geralt's story and it happens in the show and it's really well done um, and then there's an aftermath of that he's super injured he's very wounded he's like on death's door uh, but then he recovers and he meets this awesome 
Archer elf character named Milva. And so she's in the show. So I was excited to see her. She's not in the game. She's only in the books. Mm. And I just thought, hey, she's awesome. And they cast the girl who they cast is doing a great job. They've got good banter back and forth like they should. And they kind of begin their journey to go do what they're going to do, which is only like halfway through that Baptism by Fire book. And then that's the last you see of them for the season. So it's kind of a weird cutoff point. Okay. Um, weird. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Are they just going to literally plug in Liam? Yeah, I think that's, that's, like that's the plan. That's the plan. I that's actually it. think it would be weird if they made it end in a way that you're like, oh, they're saying goodbye to Henry. Well, then when Liam picks up the character and he's yeah, sure. literally supposed to be the same person, it would be a little weird. But yeah, they, they do give him some really great fight scenes this season. Not very many monster scenes, sadly. There's probably only three and they're pretty brief uh, monster encounters. And they're not like major storylines either. Like you don't really, he doesn't, he's not really a witcher at all this mm. season. He's mm. just kind of a bodyguard for Siri, and sometimes monsters attack them. So that part to me is what the first season and even second had a little bit of that where it's like, hey, he's getting paid to help this town get rid of this monster. And that yeah. kind of, that to me is part of the charm of his character a little bit. Um, but whatever. They don't have that as much. Season three is much more about the politics and backstabbing and who's making a claim on what and that's it, fine it's just that's not the most intriguing thing about the witcher stuff it's intriguing but it's not the to me they, they kind of shifted 100 percent to that and sometimes he's just in the room as the grunt i'm neutral on everything guy and it's a, after a while it's kind of like can he go fight a monster or something like i'm tired of everyone talking <laughs> can you just leave and go fight <laughs> yeah. something yeah, yeah. Um, but i do like henry cavill a lot i hope he, I know he's not Superman anymore either. So I hope whether it's the Warhammer thing, I hope something works out for him to kind of get back into. A, I think Warhammer is going to be his next obsession. Or I Bond. So. I, I, I was hearing Bond potentially. Yeah, he could. He'd be a great Bond. That would be a. That would be a. He'd be a sick. Although bond. it's one of those things too, where I'm kind of like, I don't know. Is he getting? I'm not saying he's old at all, but is he getting too old to like start a run as Bond? Maybe he's not. I know most how of them old, are there. Yeah, I don't he's, know he's only that. forty. Okay. Okay. Right. I guess a lot of them start the when they're 40. 40's the new thir- no, I mean, for him, though, he's not. What was Daniel he Craig? He was probably like late 30s, early 40s when he started. I think he was in his 40s. So it could it could totally work. I, I, think, I he, think they usually go for like 40-year-olds. They don't yeah. go for like really sure. young guys. And I wouldn't be surprised shit. if they go younger this time, though. For I was thinking more like a, a Taron Edgerton, like Taron Edgerton style uh, yeah. cast. Um, but who knows? Anyway... I do recommend. What about Twisted Metal? So I recommend Witcher with some caveats of it's better if you're already a fan or if you're really ready to pay attention and let some things go. What about Twisted Metal? Did that deliver what Twisted Metal fans wanted? Oh, gosh. I wish I were the person to answer that. Damn. Oh, um, I thought Derek watched it. I think he just well, watched Well, I mean, episode. I can answer it from a Twisted Metal fan, but I only got to watch one episode. Okay. I, watched so, the oh, free, I got to watch the free episode. Overall, Jeff... I know you weren't loving it, but did you wrap it up? No, no. By the time I sent, I think I sent that message pretty late last night. And I was like, I might as well just finish. It's four episodes. And then I just didn't have any time today to do anything other than like practice and then go to the movie and then go to the show that I had. Is that an unfair thing to say that you didn't love it? It seemed like you didn't love it. Yeah, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, but it was just kind of like, I have other shows going on. Like Good Omens dropped as well. And it's a, it's a new season I've been waiting like two years for two, three years for. So I was like, well, I, I kind of want to watch the show that I want to watch, you know, not the show that I'm, I'm like, sure, feels like a chore, uh, but you. it's just yeah. the uh, Twisted Metal. It probably would have helped if I were the fan, a fan of the games for sure. But even then, I feel like there's not a lot of car combat, in my opinion, which is what Twisted Metal is about. Yeah, that's so, what Twisted literally. Metal is. Yeah, but to so, be fair, I don't know. To the that's show again, I haven't watched True, more right. than one True. episode unless they were going to do something cheesy like. Mortal Kombat and be like, this is the annual Twisted Metal tournament. Like, you can't really do that. I actually kind of... No, no. I kind of loved that stuff. I kind of appreciate that they try to take what little story this franchise has, because it really is just, hey guys, we get the worst of the worst to come do a tournament, and whoever wins, I do one favor for them. Like, you can ask for anything, and I do it. And the uh, for those who doesn't don't play Twisted Metal games, the funny part about the game is every wish that these idiots make, he always does it literal, and it ends up being a terrible thing for them. So they always <laughs> screw up their wish. So that's sure. kind of the dark humor is mm. that they go through this entire tournament, 
and then they make their they finally get their wish and then he like screws them over because they say it wrong um so it, it would be really hard to do like a successful show yeah. if they did it that way so i kind of like that they were the the first episode i watched it's a it's a definitely the setup and that is you meet anthony mackey who i think i don't think he's part of like He's just like your new character, right? Yeah, he's okay. yeah, he's player character, character type of yeah. Yeah, like you create your character and you create this guy. Kind of like in right. the Mortal Kombat movie, have the same thing. They have a new character, <laughs> yeah. right? even though they yeah. have the protagonist we could have followed right there. Right, right. L- or, literally right. Liu Kang. But that know, was like my least favorite aspect of that. Like, like here's yeah, Jimmy. I didn't understand that whatever because he thing. like yeah, the guy Jimmy. they even Liu Kang is right there. Okay, whatever. He <laughs> looks like Kenshi, so I don't even know why you went with Cole Han or whatever his name is, but um. But this game, like the the the, the or this episode, was a nice little setup. Like they they give you like a story. So Anthony Mackie's kind of he is a he's kind of a, a belter. He's an in between dude. So he lives outside the big cities, and he can't go into the big cities. He's he's one of the I think it's all criminals are left outside of the big cities to kind of fend for themselves. And so what sure. Anthony Mackie's character does is he does a lot of like. Uh, trips and deliveries. He's just basically a delivery boy from each city, and 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 so he's offered a deal where I I from what I'm understanding, Nev Campbell is her character is kind of playing what I'm forgetting his name, but the main villain in the Twisted Metal series is, and that he she is offering Anthony Mackie his dream come true if you do this one job for me. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And so Anthony Mackey accepts this job because she offers, you can now live in my city, which is I think new San Francisco. Um, but he yeah. has to drive to new Chicago, which is an extremely dangerous journey. May, pick up this package and bring it back to her. And if he brings it back to her, she will allow him to live in the city. I won't yeah. spoil it. There's more to it. And I thought it was a good setup episode. Okay. I think yeah. there was still a lot of cheese to it, but I did appreciate a lot of the humor. And as a fan of the show, this is where I kind of agree with Jeff. Where, or yeah, uh, of the yeah. games, I'm like, ah, I want more car combat. You know, like I get that you can't do like a tournament thing without it being cheesy, but I'm hoping, and I'm guessing based off of what Jeff said. I was hoping there would be on his journey there and back a lot of like car combat that felt like the game. Where yeah, there's there some, was one, yeah. yeah, like in the first uh, sh- show, there's one scene where it is car combat, but it doesn't feel like the game. Like yeah. the way they executed it doesn't feel like the game. I would have rather there be like equipment on each car and not be controlled by humans. Which, which, which is what they were doing. It just felt weird. So I'm curious how they're going to implement the characters of the game because I did watch some reviews on it and the characters of the game are apparently in the show, but the way they execute it isn't... Uh, again, I'm only going by reviews. Isn't done exactly well, but the overall, yeah. they like the show. So yeah. I am yeah. definitely going to watch it. I will probably end up watching it through the entire thing by the time we record next week and i'll give my impressions and nice. but, yeah and that's, the, that's the take it? i'm most curious of because uh i'm watching it just from a show perspective i don't really have any yeah. attachment to the game franchise whatsoever yeah so, this is one um, of my favorite franchises not that i was like man i really want a show i i never was like that yeah but you're coming out really want an a educated game. point of view like i'm not, i don't i don't yeah, know anything hope... about what the dynamic's supposed to be I just know Here's there's what I will car say. combat. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I will say. I'm really happy it got a show and that it's overall reviewing pretty well because I saw a lot of people in groups saying, holy crap, Twisted Metal's good, and that made me more excited to watch it. And the reason I'm excited about this is if if they can kind of create like people get watching and an interest there, we might get, even if we don't get a new Twisted Metal, give me like, a remastered version of the first one or the second one or a combo pack, whatever. I would love to have that. I know they re-released Twisted Metal 1 and 2. I was actually going to ask Dan because you have the premium, PlayStation Premium. Oh, right. Yeah, they, they re-released have... Twisted Metal yeah. 1 and 2 and they, I guess, upscaled them. Like, they didn't do anything. They just 
they made it where you can play them on PS5. So I was going to yeah. ask you if yeah. it, it, I have it premium looked, too, but yeah. those are really far down my list of games. Yeah, I I, I never um I th- I like played a little bit of some of the Twisted Metals, but that wasn't a series that I Oh, I, I thought I you really, really liked that series. Am no. I the only one that really liked I think that Kyle series? does. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe yeah, maybe it was Kyle. Kyle I, I think I've played like one. I was of really them. hoping I was a special boy. I was really uh, I will I say that uh, as far as the reviews go and take us with the grain of salt, because I know that they review them by episode, I think. I don't remember how this works. I'm not in tomatoes with TV shows, but 92 percent audience score on average right now. So that's wow. a positive like the it's audience supposed to be just like, reviewing it as a whole season since it dropped because yeah, they season. released yeah. it all. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of that's going to be 10 out of 10. Twisted Metal's finally got a show like, OK, that's fair. Yeah. Just like sometimes you get zeros. Out of it, so like take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> But people are still enjoying it, it seems like. And yeah. the critic average is just under two-thirds positive, 65%. So that's not bad. Which is, dude, I would have expected that to be like 30. I really thought so, it was going to be, yeah. Uh, like, so, like it's not yeah. bad, to be double that, I'm yeah. totally okay with that. So, like, episode two has that Sucks. scene that they showed at the Game Awards, the, the thong song in the casino. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and even that. in context, I still hate that scene. I hate it so much. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and, but there's and it's I wish it were the only scene that had that type of humor where I'm like I'm where I'm feeling like the writers want me to laugh, but the right. joke just is falling flat. What I felt like when I watched that scene was like, oh, I feel out of the loop. Like this isn't for me even a little bit, and I just kind of um, felt out of place. That was watching so it. cringe. Um, yeah, it was so bad. It's not the but, only uh, cringe parts in the show. Don't get me wrong; there are some funny parts. There's right, some man, parts you gotta go on they... expectations, right? Yeah. It's all about your expectations. Now, right? now that I have it, I'm just, maybe I'll enjoy the f- last four episodes more, maybe. Uh, but but there's like some bits where they, uh, in episode five or six, they get to like this type of Chuck E. Cheese type place. The uh, Anthony Mackie's character and Stephanie Beatrice's character, mm-hmm. um, they're like on a journey together at some point. Um, but yeah, they go to like some type of Chuck E. Cheese, and there's a lot of interacting in a ball pit and. It's, there's some funny bits involving a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. All right. It's not Chuck E. Cheese because they can't use that for copyright reasons, but it's that type of place. It's just um, Chuck. Yeah, where they're like, they're like, Jeez, that's where that's where they Jeez, would Chuck like that's Charles. where that's where some of them would sleep it, is in the ball pit, and one of them would try to like sneak out, but you can't sneak out in a ball. Can't sneak out of a ball pit. Yeah. Everything moves. <laughs> and then the other one would be like, "Hey, I'm mad at you," and he'd like try to charge out of the ball, and you can't do that you either. Can't run so in the ball just, pit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, all right, just for the sake of time here, if we could quick reviews, and I, I was much more interested in Ninja Turtles and Twisted Metal, so I'm ha- happy to, that we spent time yeah. on those. But for the Resident Evil movie that's out for rent, and for the Secret Invasion finale, we've already talked a little bit about Secret Invasion as a show. So just quick, quick thoughts on how it wrapped up, and then same with Resident Evil movie. If, if any of you watched it, so like if we could like a minute or two on those. Did anybody watch the Resident Evil? I just uh, death, bought death it, Island. so I will talk about it next week. Okay. Oh, okay. I definitely want that's another one I want to hear a fan perspective on because for me, I'm like, oh, this was decent. The visuals look like ridiculous now in a good way uh, for these type of like CG animated movies that they do based on video games, like Final Fantasy does them too and stuff. Like the story, they, uh, they just look insane. Stories uh, are just not on, on par, like super great. Like the mm. the last one before this one, which was the Netflix one, right? If I'm not mistaken, Derek, um, it was it like wasn't bad. Are you talking like, about like the like CG movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was the one that came out what last year, I think. There was one. Well, I last thought last year, year was a live action show. But... Yeah, that was a show on Netflix, but or a show. But it was Damnation. A CG show. I think was the last one, a regeneration or something. Whatever. Okay. There's like four of them. I've watched yeah. the previous three. Here's my take. First of all, let's again, this goes back to what I said about Twisted Metal. And yes, Tim, I'll keep it quick. Resident Evil is not, it doesn't have a good story, guys. It's stupid. So trying to translate that to movies, shows. Talking about it's amazing. I'm just kidding. No, it's really bad. <laughs> There's not much well, there. Not. And so for me, I watch these movies for the characters and the action. Yeah. And I, I mean, like really the previous three. Like, mm-hmm. I like the previous three, so I fully expect I'll like this one. I think Amazon, you'll like this one then. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon six, sent me like a six dollar credit for the way I bought 4K movies from them. Mm-hmm. So I went on and I bought the digital version. It's fifteen dollars, so I got it for nine bucks. So I just nice. bought it today. So I'll watch it after the show. Well, Leon really is good. played by Ganondorf's voice actor. So there's that little piece of. Ah, yeah, interesting. Hold on, Der- Derek. You saw the last one, right? Was that the one where there was like, I saw like a, a gif of it or something where there's like. 
I forget if it's Leon or if it's Chris, but it, it's one of them. And they're like they're like rolling around on top of a building or something. And they're trying to sh- they're actually shooting at each other, but they're practically on top of each other and they just keep missing. And, and they're just rolling around and, and back and forth. Like, does that ring a bell at all? Or Yes, I, I know okay. what you're talking about. Okay. I don't know if it yeah. was the last one or the one before, okay. but. Yeah, you guys. Anyway, I thought uh, the movie was cool, but obviously I'm out of the loop on a lot of the Resident Evil stuff. Yeah. So the characters okay. just don't resonate with me maybe at this point maybe. there might be oh. some characters who show up that others might be like whoa and you're yeah oh, and course. i thought the finale was actually kind of cool the big set piece ending so oh, the right. last nice. one was resident evil vendetta the one before that yeah, damnation okay. and the one before that degeneration dude there's so much resident evil content so I feel much like I, I would need like an encyclopedia to help me get through all this stuff uh, yeah. um, we can we can skip over the se- secret invasion finale because uh you can skip over the entire show honestly that's that's sadly <laughs> Yeah, that, that seems to be the consensus. It started really, yeah. I, I got, I heard a vibe of like great, like peak at the beginning, and yes. then it kind of went down. That's what I've heard. I don't know. If yeah, it's... that's how it felt. Yeah, that's, that's how bad. it felt going on that ride. We're like, I watched the finale, and I was you can like, skip talking about it. You can skip that. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's a shame. Uh, by the way, that sounds like a good candidate for your next ten second review. Just do a t- ten second TV review. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should, you should definitely just a 10 second long skip, skip, yeah, just skip. skip. Ten and you don't even get to the P, the video just cuts off. <laughs> yeah. Yay. He told me to go ski. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, let's go through a quick preview of the month of August. Games are coming out, there's a lot of games that are coming out. So, you Hell guys yeah. tell me, can't wait, what you're interested in out of these. I tried to grab some like. Uh, DLC stuff too, but I didn't. I so I found a site that say it says that it specializes in like uh, release dates for DLC and expansions and stuff. And August was super bare from what from what this site was saying. And I did a little search and I couldn't find a ton. So let me know if you know of something that I forget here. Um, on August second, we've got the Atomic Heart Annihilation Instinct DLC hitting for Atomic Heart. So there you go. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. That was such a <laughs> great game no that I keep. That's this week playing. August second, uh, there's a game called Thronefall. Don't be deceived by the name. It's not a Derek game. Thronefall. Oh, it's not. Not a Derek game. This is a Tim game with maybe a little touch of Kyle, possibly Jeff being interested. It's like a a strategy tower defense kind of a thing. Um, that is a that's a PC no. early access. Uh, you can also get early access to Baldur's Gate three now, obviously, but the full PC release comes out on August third, followed oh. by consoles in September. So that's Baldur's Gate three on august 3rd uh, alongside of that is this game called black skylands which is i've talked about it before it's a overhead kind of 16 bit slash 32 bit style game where you are exploring and upgrading uh kind of in the sky world where you're connecting airships to each other and floating islands and stuff it's very very cool it's not um, sky um, pirates Dan. but it's i mean it's, like it. it's, it's it's an overhead oh, view there's a little bit of sky pirate element to it oh, i was um, just trying to ruin it but uh, I, I thought it was really I played the demo and I thought it was really, really neat. So I think I actually bought it in early access, uh, but it was going to wait till the full release, which is this week. So I'll give it a whirl um, again on Steam. There's Black a game Sky. on the fourth coming out called Splash, and it's like a 2D samurai fighting game. Oh, and the that's art a great style name too. is super good. The art style is so Splash. unique. It's like hands the one or where hit. it's like a one hit kill. I think, I think so. there's a game coming out soon where yeah. you get hit once you die. Ooh, think, Splash looks cool. Yeah, I think it's I think it is a one hit. It's like all shadows. Like one like hit it's silhou- kill like or something like silhou- that. Silhouetted for some of it. It looks really neat. Oh, man. Yeah. Splash is cool. All right, that's August 4th. Uh, Hopefully August... that's cheap on Steam whenever it comes out. That's I'll totally get that if it's like 15 bucks. Yeah, it doesn't have a price yet, does it? There's a no. demo, though, so maybe I'll try the demo. Oh, damn. I didn't even... Damn it. I didn't see the demo. Shit. Okay. I'm so Don't disappointed get mad. in myself. Don't get damn. mad. Don't get mad. Just go play it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy crying. <laughs> the poop, Ron. The poop the coming poop, out of your mouth. Poop out. The poop uh, out. Your poop mouth. Um, WrestleQuest comes out on August eighth. This is like a year later than I thought it would have come out, but I guess they did a lot of work on it because oh, it was. Yeah, I forgot about that. A demo that I played last summer, thinking it was coming out late summer, early fall, and they kept bumping it back. And so, uh, August eighth might be August seventh, but depends on the platform, I think. But it's hitting all platforms. Um, I'm curious to see reviews on that one because I thought the demo was fun, if not pretty uh, janky in some ways. So um, we'll see. I do love some wrestling, though. We've talked about it. I love like nods to old school wrestling, too. So I feel like I will enjoy this game. There's a Mega Man like called uh, 30XX. 
um, comes out on PC and Switch, which looks really cool. It's in early access now on Steam. It has been for a while, uh, but the full release hits Switch and uh, PC on August 9th. If you like the Mega Man X style of graphics and visuals, oh, yeah. it looks like that to me. Um, so I think that looks cool. Out there. Atlas Fallen on August 10th hits PC, PS5. There's your fall, Derek fall. game. There's the fall. There's the fall. Derek, I am actually legitimately very interested to hear if that's worth my time and attention. So I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts in a couple weeks oh, on that one. You put on guard in there. Thank God that game is that game. Was I did. So on guard comes out on August 16th, just on PC for now, although it could come out to other stuff later. I, You've I talked played about the demo. This. It is stupid. I love it. It looks so silly. <laughs> it's so it ridiculous. Looks, <laughs> it looks very silly. Uh, moving out too is the day before that on August 15th on all platforms. Um, just kind of multiplayer mayhem type of game uh there's a strategy game that i downloaded the demo for but shamefully still have not tried called shadow gambit the cursed crew i always thought it looked cool it looked like XCOM with pirates i don't know if that's actually what it is though that's just what it looked like at a glance um maybe not pirates maybe like fantasy with some pirate elements to it pc ps5 series x for that one that's august 17th on, on that same day you can play vampire survivors on the switch which is a to me a Pretty hand and glove fit for that t- style of game. Um, so that's pretty cool. On August 18th, there's this game called Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which I remember being shown at one of the events in the last several months. Yeah. Which I think was a direct, maybe. Anyway, Indie World, perhaps. I just thought it looked really cool. This style looks great. If you yeah. like uh, Jet Set the, Radio and that kind of stuff, it just has that vibe. For both of us, we were like, uh, what is this now? Yeah. Like, we, yeah. yeah, we were both like, I want to play this now. Yeah, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk looks great. Uh, PC and Switch for that one. Madden 24, also on August 18th. So a Oh, they're bit. making another Madden? Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't know if you knew they that. They never do that. Madden. That's yeah. so yeah. weird. Yeah, no. Finally but with the new It's about Madden. time. Yeah, it's about time. Uh, <laughs> Where's my NCAA football game? <laughs> next summer. They're yeah. saying next summer. Oh, they, they, they'll say that. Dude, that, that thing's going to get canceled. Summer, but yeah. It's gonna be. Where's my NAACP it. game? Sorry, I don't. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, I don't know what you do in that game, and let's not take some guesses <laughs> at it, please. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre hits on the 18th as well. I think that's a Game Pass Day one. Game. It is. It is. So, Which one? Uh, Texas, Texas Chainsaw. Chainsaw? Massacre. Oh wow! Okay, that's cool. I mean, yeah, sort of. Um, sort of Dead by Daylight. So. Yeah, a little yeah. Dead by Daylight looking. Yeah. yeah. Um, Immortals right, of AVM got bumped out of this month to August 22nd. So that'll be out on, I think it's PS5, Series X, and PC for that EA game. Um, I'm still cautiously optimistic. About I'm that. planning on getting that. I mean, there's five games this month that I'm planning on getting. So yeah, there's a, that's it's, one of them. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting month. Is, is Madden and Alice Fallen two other ones? Uh, Bowler's Gate. Three Atlas Fallen Immortals. I'm looking at Armor Core Six and then okay. Sea of Stars. Oh, got it. So you're not gonna do? I thought sometimes you got Madden to play. No, play I haven't games. played a Madden game in like ten plus years. Oh, wow. The last time I Good loved memory, Madden Jeez. was I know. The last time I loved Madden was probably like the mid 2000s, 04, 05. Like that's the last time that I was. I would like count down the days. I loved the soundtrack. Yeah, I, I used loved... to love NCAA football and Madden. And Madden like, yeah. I would I play both. Madden too, obsessively man. just for like 2011 and 2012 for some reason. Just those okay, years. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I just did. It, and it, was it, it felt really good. The bills were amazing those two years. No, they weren't. They really were. <laughs> they're, right they're amazing now. Um, but I made them amazing. This is in the now game. the time to play. Hey, there's, I a, there's a new cart game coming out Smurfs cart. So that'll be yeah. fun. <laughs> can't, can't wait to um, not yeah. Play that. It's hitting every platform except for the Switch, which to me They're seems not... like you put that yeah. game on the Switch if you're going to yeah, make that game. Nintendo yeah, was okay. like, don't you dare. Don't probably, you dare. Probably. <laughs> um, Blasphemous, <laughs> Blasphemous 2 hits on August 24th. Sweet. Uh, on all platforms. I really um, like that first game. It's tough, but it's good. Ride 5, which those are games I never got into. I think played one or two of them that were like free on PS Plus or something at one point, I feel like. Uh, but uh, Ride five comes out on. Ride three was the best. They did some weird things with four, so I don't know. We'll see. Is it just a racing game? Are you making this up? You're making this yes, up. Yes, I right? am. Of course, yes. Okay, yes. I thought. <laughs> it's um, a biker game, right? Oh, it's a, okay. I have That's no idea. Speed bikes, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. It's like hyper realistic, kind of like the yeah. A set of what is it? A I think I tried to play them once, and I couldn't even like 
get around the first turn, I was just like bumping. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> oh, it's just like I can't drive. Yeah, that's... I'm like, uh, forget this. I'm not. So on, now. on August 25th, you have two choices. You can play Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, on all the systems except for the Switch, of course. Or you can jump into that open beta for Skull and Bones. <laughs> <laughs> that game refuses to quit. <laughs> I can't believe it's still happening. Um, Tim, you're making fun of that, but you know you're going to be playing that open beta. I won't beta. be playing the open beta. I won't, but I will be playing that game when it comes out because I'm, I have a problem. Um, <laughs> so have who problem. is looking for, <laughs> who's looking forward to Armored Core? Is oh, anybody? Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Okay. I know, of course, Kyle, of course Kyle is. It's yeah. a yeah. strong phrase because it's a FromSoft game, and I know I'm how I about it. generally feel about it's, those games. It's game, not so. exactly it's not like from the Souls Soft. game. It, it's not exactly like the. You, you, you should go read the article that Push Square put out, and I think it put a lot of concerns to rest because people were saying like, "Oh, cool!" So they put the Souls thing into Armor Core. They really didn't. Like, so the Push Square folks played it for three hours. They interviewed the developers. There's really hardly anything about the game that's going to feel like Souls outside of maybe it's a little difficult. It's like an easy game, but like there's checkpoints. It's mission based. Yeah. You don't lose things if you die. You just reset at a checkpoint. Yeah. It's Those it's not meant to not be like brutal. It. It's meant to be like a, a an action adventure RPG where you upgrade your yeah. Your but it's it's there's still like an RPG element where it's build focused, and if you go in with wrong build, it's like, oh it's very intense. Oh, I'm getting decimated. Uh, you know. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you it's hard though, because I think I. A, a they're lot not of easy fight. yeah yeah, yeah no, it's a never hard were. so i don't know if i we'll see. will i will I mean, buy it just because i i've never been into mechs like i've never cared about playing games that's, with mechs. yeah that's my thing too mech games i usually go i don't really enjoy this i don't know yeah, why yeah love mechs. it depends i've liked some of them there's been some like mechs. that platinum games transformers game i really loved so it just depends on the that game one actually was pretty <laughs> solid yeah like that game was a blast. I've, I've always felt like the odd man out on that game because I hated playing that game. I don't know uh, what. I'm so sorry. Oh, I love that. Nobody game. else hated that game except for me. Like I swear, I, I never played it. I, what I played is it? I thought it was fun. Uh, the, it was Transformers. Um, was it I don't Cybertron? Know it either, but it was Devastation. Very, might have been. Uh, I think might it's Devastation. Devastation. Whatever one that Platinum Games made. Did they make more yeah, than yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think, think it was, it was just that one. one. It was yeah. just that one. Because um, there's been multiple Transformers games, obviously, but that's the one that I, I played. I was like, I kind of like the feeling of this combat. And I just played through the whole thing. Um, wow, that's commitment. That's awesome. Yeah, but I played it on easy, so I had a lot of fun with that. Oh, um, fake, fake gamer. Okay. Fake gamer. That's right. August 29th, <laughs> guys, finally guessed on. Goodbye, Volcano High comes out. <laughs> what is this? August 29th. Is this a- this is a visual novel or the real contenders. Yeah. It's out. like your anthropomorphic animals in high school, like in it oh, violent pass, and, pass yeah. harder than anybody's ever. Not Game Pass, just pass. General just pass, pass. pass. And it's not coming <laughs> to Game Pass. It's not coming to Xbox at all because this is a Sony and PC game only. Okay. Uh, so is Sony gonna advertise this as like the game like it's that we game can't wait to play? Like Chia. <laughs> like Chia. They're yeah, like, like, like Chia. this is yeah. the most Yeah. <laughs> requested watch, game no it's that. not nobody knows watch, what you're talking about bro watch this game have like an excellent story though i know what's like, it yeah. wins all these awards and stuff for <laughs> i have a feeling this is actually going to be a daniel game like he'll be the one talking oh, about I can't like, yeah, it. Played it. It's i game of the, the year design. i hate no the design, design looks it's it's the pterodactyl looking characters yeah, the with the long snouty faces works for you i don't I well because chicken detective is hilarious because it literally looks like a real chicken like chicken detective yeah, they literally took like an actual like what looks like a, a real life chicken, but the mouth's On moving. A human body, yeah, it's so stupid. It's just <laughs> it's so funny though. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's hysterical. And the sequels, there's a sequel coming out. How did you even find that game? I don't know, man. That's crazy. I was scrolling through the PlayStation Plus stuff, and I was like, like chicken. Please. There's my game right there. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, on that same day, August 29th, the Sea of Stars is hitting all platforms, but specifically will be available for free if you already subscribed to Game Pass or to PlayStation premium or whatever the yeah. other it's like higher the top two the, tiers yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not the basic one, one. yeah not yeah the basic. yeah dude you're just I'm basic just... uh <laughs> you know i got game pass so i'll be on that and that game does look really intriguing to me especially with my yeah. newfound love for like Octopath like do i like these type of games <laughs> yeah and this game does look, art style wise i'm like i think I'm, I think there's I'll a demo it. for it's it fun. too yeah, I've had it installed for months and I haven't gotten to it. Dude, so. I'm, I've got, I probably got, I have had a few of those that the demo became no longer available and the only option was purchase when I finally was ready to go play it. I was like, oh, yeah. Right. Uh, oh, man. I, yeah. I didn't want to play that because I was like, I, I know, I know I'm going to love this. It's fun. 
Yes. I did finally play through it a couple months ago. I think I talked about it. Uh, Under the Waves uh, from... Is that, is that the Quantic Dream game? Yes. Yeah, it's... Um, shoot. It's like that underwater... It's offshoot. Game. Yeah, they're um, one of their indie... Their Something indie with an L. You, talk, you, you mentioned that one. Uh, or at least Gosh, they have another game coming Parallel out. Studio. Parallel, okay. Yeah, it's their only game so far. So I think this oh, is the one. These one. are like the this is like the offshoot Quantic Dream yeah. indie yeah, yeah. developer. Yeah. Uh, and then Trine Five uh, comes out on August thirty first. I didn't know about this. We've I've played through a couple of the Trine games. My kids played more through more of them than I have. Um, but they're kind of fun, surprisingly fun multiplayer side scrolling kind of action adventure games. They're still trying. Oh, good. Ah. good. Still That's trying. Good. Ah. Thanks, thanks for that joke. That was you were yeah. definitely trying on that one. I did. I tried. All right. So if you only bought one game this coming month, what would you buy? You can only have enough money to buy one game. I'm watching that clip from the video Dan sent of the Resident Evil Vendetta <laughs> gunfight. They're right. literally right next to each other. Yeah, they're right completely. next. <laughs> and like running in circles yeah, and like, like somehow missing each it's other. It's like, like that off the scene from The Office. Where did you uh, send it? Uh, in the Michael in the Scarn chat. movie where they're, where they're right chat. next yes. to each yep, other. Yep, yep, yep. Ice skating, missing each other, <laughs> oh shooting. God. Yeah. Oh, and then he oh, and then, like, uh, Jim shooting underneath the their arms and stuff. And then Jim hurls the gun at him. <laughs> he throws the gun. Um, <laughs> so if you if you only bought one game this month, if you had to buy one game but could only afford one this month, Dan, what would you be buying? Do you think? Um, definitely see stars. Yeah, yeah, I'm with. I think that's a good pick. Yeah, definitely see. Jeff, stars. what would you be buying this month? You think? Um, besides the Skull and Bones open beta, obviously. <laughs> Damn, it took my thing. You don't even have to buy it. It's a beta. Gosh, I guess it's reviews dependent still, but yeah, Immortals Vavium looks like it would be up my alley the most of all of these games. Yeah, I think that's my pick out of these two. There's a bunch that are like, oh, I'm, I wonder if Bomb Rush Cyberpunk will be as good as it looks. You know, I right. wonder if, I wonder if um, Blasphemous Two, or you know, I have some question marks, but I think it might be Immortals of Avium. Mm -hmm. Possibly, I, I kind of just I'm looking forward to the next big AAA experience that looks like it's going to be it but i could be wrong derek which one would you pick i'm gonna atlas have to go Fallen. with Baldur's gate three oh, but yeah. atlas fallen's like that's it's right there i don't know that's right there yeah i was gonna say i forgot Armored. hello it's a fall but game it's like on, maybe Armored i'm core. just yeah. like like i loved i loved yeah. Baldur gates three like the early access i've talked about it before on the show the the amount of time i put into it but like I feel like I'm watching all these videos that are like taking it to the next level of like literally, and I'm not talking about one off videos, multiple videos. And yeah. these are like legit sites too, that are like, this is the greatest D and D game ever. This is going to change those games. And I'm like, really? Like it's this big of a deal. So I'm really excited about that one. I really hope it, it, gives me uh story wise and like decisions because we just talked about telltales and how like we love telltales because of based off the choices you make like boulders gate 3 is going to be like that too but it's not just story driven and character driven decisions it's combat driven decisions and by the way you can sleep you can have sex with a bear you know you can have sex with a bear priorities yep. goatee goatee um yeah, exactly and, that's game of the year stuff right there <laughs> Derek, speak, speaking to your and um to your choices thing, did you see how many endings the game's gonna have? It's like seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand ending variations. So imagine, I would imagine choices wise, there's gonna be a lot of choices. I mean, I, I don't know. Does that mean like maybe even just slightly different dialogue? I don't know. Oh sure, means. probably. Yeah, it could even be something different like that. Yeah. But yeah. It, they're clearly like speaking. That's crazy. To the amount of nuance that everything's going to have. And I would imagine choices too are going to be. Very Dan, do you nuanced. remember when Chrono Trigger had like nine endings, 12 endings? And we were like, whoa, <laughs> that's so yeah. many. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've seen I, when I've played through maybe one or two. Like, so I have never even experienced all. Oh, of I'm just yeah. curious. I mean, obviously, with a number that high, uh, like that's overwhelming because you got to understand with this game, like I know other games kind of do it, but this game, like you can literally like you can lose everybody. Yeah. Like, you, you, like everything can be changed, and that's what's crazy to me. This is that depth, the the depth that this game is going to. Yeah. What I'm hoping is that it won't be too hard, because I have no problem saying I suck at these games, and that I can just really like enjoy it, and I want to see it through. 
Um, whereas the other ones like Divinity, I like those games, but I never felt like I was ever attached to any of the characters or the world. So it was more like I just enjoyed like the the combat side of it. It was fun and like the decisions you're making. This I'm hoping like the characters matter. Um, at yeah. least when I was playing early access, you you they they come along with you and it becomes like almost like that Dragon Age vibe where it's like you're a party you're on this quest together you don't want to lose them or you might end up hating them so much you want to kill them or manipulate yeah. them or whatever yeah. well so, it actually I like that. In, you're having conversations with them whereas yeah. like I, I think it was divinity 2 i started playing on on, on my yeah. pc and it's just like it's still top down in conversations yeah, and, and i know that sounds like a small thing but it's totally different it, like it engrosses yeah. you in the game so much more when you're actually seeing their faces and their interactions and you're having oh, I what I would that. call triple yeah. A like cutscene type dialogue situations. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I will say, to... speaking of Divinity Original Sin 2, I did hear, and I don't know if this is any this is true or not, this is one data point out there that I read. Because as, as we've been talking about Baldur's Gate 3, I keep being reminded, I own Divinity Original Sin 2 on mm. probably three different platforms, and I've yeah, got to same. play this thinking game more than I've ever given it a chance for before. Yeah, I just, and I've been bought, I just bought that, it like, myself last week. I've yeah, been told it. that it's got a great story and great lore, but if you pick one of the pre-made characters, it's much more interesting because they're an established character with background and lore, yeah, and yeah. the interactions are just much, as opposed to create, you can create your own from scratch and kind of have a generic you know, lore yeah. background that works and that's it'll cool. still be good. But I've heard that the pre-made characters stories are much more interesting. I don't know if that's true yeah. or not. Um, that's just what I heard. Um, so I thought that was, I might try that because I think I've only ever created a character in that. I need to just pick one and go, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. And just wanted to mention too, because you guys were talking about Baldur's Gate 3. There's another are, series. Is anybody else interested in that game besides me oh, and yeah. Kyle? Yeah, no, definitely. I, I'm probably not going to get it right away. The dice rolling I, just is I, I play. off-putting for me. I don't know why. Yeah, I want to I wanna pick that Hater. up. Hater's going to hate. Yeah. Tim doesn't like die. He doesn't like die. I don't. Uh, but I was watching a video. One of you shared it in our group, and I watched it today. The Path of Exile 2 gameplay deep dive. They went, it was like a 29-minute yeah. video. Mm -hmm. And it's not from only their it, Exile Con. Apparently, they have conventions now. Exile Con. Yeah, yeah. it looks... It, I mean, it looks really good. Like it, To me, it looks like Diablo 4 levels of like visuals and effects and monsters. Mm -hmm. I think, to me, it looked really, really good. But they also go... He starts to explain how you can do these different builds based on, you know, the original Path of Exile game, which is still available. It's a free to play game, by the way, um, which sounds literally off putting. But the idea is that they've always leaned in towards or leaned away from pay to win. It's more about like you you play the game and you can buy all the extra stuff if you want. Yeah. Two's going to be the same way. Their closed beta is not till June of next year. Which I kind of like that they're telling you ahead of time. This is the long way away. Closed beta starts June of 2024. But all of your purchases from the first game will connect to the second and vice versa. Like they're going to allow the... Cool. I don't know how they're going to do that. But I think Activity. that's... Activity. Cool. Um, yeah, I like that they're doing that. Um, and it just looks really neat. So Yeah, yeah definitely. I think it looks, looks like a good alternative. I think jumping into PoE now would be something like... A bit, bit more daunting than doing something like Baldur's Gate, uh, for example, which you can jump in at ground level. But because right now they're appealing to seasonal players and like you know veterans, right, right. And, and like, which if makes you jump sense. in now, you'll be game. like, "What am I doing?" Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. ten year old game, and sure, it looks way more polished now than ever before. But mm -hmm. I, I, I might as well just wait for the second one, which is right. probably going to be more introductory for a lot of games. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. A um, couple headlines uh, we can go through here. There's this service called AntStream Arcade. I think we've referenced it on the show before, but most of us aren't super into cloud-based gaming uh, or cloud, or, you know, uh, game streaming. I guess. I think that some uh, services are trying to stop using the word cloud because it's off-putting for so many customers. Um, What's the cloud? So they're calling it <laughs> uh, game streaming instead. Uh, so oh there's this wow! Thanks, guys. Retro game streaming service called AntStream Arcade. It's now available on Xbox. It used to be just on like mobile devices and uh, PCs. The idea was you just it's kind of browser based or app based, but now there's actually a, a native app for Xbox. The idea there is you go and play. I think right now they've got fourteen hundred. Let me look at my little notes here. Right. Over fourteen hundred yeah. retro games. Um, the full list includes. I mean, it's it's like old school stuff like Atari and Amiga and arcades. They have uh, arcade stuff, but also newer things like Mega Drive, SNES, um, stuff like that, including things like Mortal Kombat, Metal Slug X, Earthworm Jim, Space Invaders, R-Type, 
So some classics. Uh, classics. It's very cool, and, and game preservation is incredibly important. So I yeah. agree. Uh, you can get a lifetime pass for eighty bucks, which gives you full access to it. That's pretty good. That's pretty Otherwise, good. it's uh, annual. You can buy an annual subscription for thirty. So if you want to, if you don't want to, you know, go all in on eighty, spend thirty, have access full for a full year. I still feel like that's super cheap. Um, yeah. For the number of games you have, if you're if you're an enthusiast, if you're like a game history or yeah, classic, that's pretty insane. Enthusiast. I just looked at the whole catalog and I was like. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I feel like that's there. the kind of thing like you could play ten a day, and it'll take you quite a while to get through that full catalog. Um, uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, they had like some kind of Final Fantasy fourteen con, type, some kind of event, fan, fan, fa- fan fest, I think it's called. Yeah, some kind of fan fest, and uh, Phil Spencer came out. It's coming to Xbox Series X and S in the spring of twenty four, which I think coincides with their new uh, yes. expansion, Dawn uh, Trailer. Dawn Trail. Don Trail. Don Trail, yeah. Don Trail, oh. so they got a black character? That's awesome. What? what? I don't know if I follow. What? Don Trail is a black person's name. You mean Don Trail? Is that what you're trying to say? Like Don Trail? <laughs> oh, okay. Good okay. Lord. All right. Florida man. That was a reach. So my joke was a was problem. <laughs> Don Trail. No, both of you. Both of you tie. You tie. <laughs> Uh, that's spring 2024, uh, Final Fantasy 14 coming to Xbox Series S and X. And they talked about how it's going to be able to do things it couldn't before because of whatever. I'm like, all right, it's a god. It's honestly, it's a, it's about goddamn time. <laughs> like, right, I agree. Just the the game should be on everything, like, and because it's it's a huge seller, so put it on more platforms so it makes more money, like, which is good. Totally agree. Um, there's this rumor, and a lot of times these kind of rumors are they end up being true when it's listed on a store. Um, so there's this Greek retailer called Game Explorers, and their Amiibo pre-order page ha- all of a sudden had this huge list of Amiibos that are going to apparently, according to the website, be restocked starting at the end of August um, and then another wave in November. So if you have been looking to restock on some Amiibos you missed out on, uh, keep your eyes open later this month and in November you might be seeing some of those. Don't know if that's actually going to happen. That's just they listed it. I, so. I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand why, like, if you go on, like, um, Amazon and you try to buy, like, any Zelda, like, Amiibos, mm-hmm. they're all 50 to to $100. I don't understand why Nintendo, that like, that's a little piece of plastic that they sell. First of all, they're already way over. It's like a little chip in it that it can be scanned or something. I don't understand why they can't just, like, mass produce these so we don't have this issue you know what you know what they're about they're about um what's the words uh uh word uh false scarcity or i forget oh, what the yeah yeah you know yeah. What, that's that what was they do. like that was like that's old school they should yeah. i mean i don't know seems like i don't still get do it. It with some stuff yeah. but i also don't know how well i mean they sold well enough obviously to like disappear right and to be marked up and resold but mm. maybe they weren't flying off shelves because i i remember when I would go into GameStop and Best Buy and stuff, I feel like I would always see tons of Amiibos that were untouched. Like some of them, of course, are popular and gone, but there's so many that were that are st- probably still available, still sitting there yeah. with dust on them. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the characters, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't care about getting, I don't know, like Ness or something. I don't, I don't know, Wh- whichever Amiibos people don't care about. Yeah. Um. Two classic Zelda, Legend of Zelda games are now live on the Switch Online service. They did add Oracle of Ages and Seasons. If, so if you go, uh, if you have the, I, th- I think you don't have to have Expansion Plus for this. I can't remember if Game Boy games are part of Expansion Pack Plus or just yeah. Nintendo Switch Online. I don't remember. But anyway, if you have access to the Game Boy library, you now have access to these two. Still, yeah. shamefully, two of the Zelda games, or I guess one Zelda entry that I've never played. Never played these. Yeah. Well, those were on the Game Boy. I uh, Game Boy. never experienced those on the Game Boy, so that is cool. Yeah, yep. Might give those a whirl. Uh, PS Plus games for August include PGA Tour 2K23, Dreams, and Death's Door. Uh, I can only speak to one of those. Death's Door is fantastic. So, yep. Dreams is pretty cool, but I could have sworn they said they were shutting the servers down, so kind of weird. I mean, it has a story. I, like, I was going to say, they like do story, have like a story but, on Yeah, that it. demo thing or whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like four hours. It's really good. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if you can, though, also keep any content that's already like been uploaded. So maybe there's more on. Oh, there so maybe you just it. can't add new stuff after a certain date. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Mm. 
But we talked a little bit about Armored Core 6 already. There was a gameplay reveal live stream earlier this week. And I know there was a lot of chatter out there about, oh, it looks like they just took the Dark Souls formula and apply it to mechs. And um, in subsequent interviews and hands-on time, from what I've seen, the, it's a unanimous no, that's not what's happening. This is Armored Core. If you've played Armored Core, this is more Armored Core. It's great. Um, they're not. It's not an easy, it's not like an, uh, a breezy arcade experience. It's very in-depth, like previous Armored Cores. It's not an easy game. Like, you, you know, you do have to get good at it, I guess, to a certain extent. But it's nowhere near, like, a Souls-like experience. So <clears throat> that's at least that's what I've read as I've looked around at uh, a lot yeah. of the impressions out there from hands-on time with it. So, yep. So that is out. Uh, Castlevania Nocturne got this oh, new uh, uh, trailer for Netflix. It premieres on September 28th. If you're familiar with that, um, there was a Castlevania series. How many seasons did that get? Two? Uh, three. Three seasons? And so, of course, that... Oh, maybe it was or maybe four. it was four. Was it? It got four? a hand. It got a handful of seasons it somewhere. Uh, it got less, seasons, guys. It got, it got more than less one. than five. Less than five it seasons. A, it got a number. <laughs> it got a certain number of seasons. Um, but that's <laughs> that series came to an end, and now this is a new one, Nocturne, um, that premieres on September twenty eighth, and the of course continues to look awesome. That's that's it, another one that's on my queue that I have not watched yet. But I think it takes great. place like centuries or something. Yeah, later. it's later on. It's later. Yeah, because it's like a descendant of the person from the first Castlevania series. It's it's not even like. Is this Alucard? Uh, no. Well, no. So Alucard is um, uh, he's the vampire, right? Oh, or okay, half vampire? Okay, okay. He's yeah, the yeah, half yeah, vampire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Belmont. Uh, Belmont. I just don't know his first name. Uh, Richter Belmont. Is it Richter or Belmont? Simon. Yeah, he was a protagonist in Rondo of Blood, Symphony of the Night, and Akumajo Dracula the Metal. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh wait, That's is he? Is it? Is this up. the one in Nocturne? <laughs> the belmont from uh rondo of blood yeah Richard oh Bell. okay yeah okay i didn't nice. know this. and maria renard yeah so uh, go watch that trailer if you haven't yet and then september 28th you'll get access to that new netflix animated series looks very very cool uh ubisoft uh it was first it was rumored and then they confirmed that they've canceled its immortals phoenix rising sequel plans which was already in development don't not immortals not, then not probably, immortals. yeah it's definitely immortal <laughs> Um, which is a bummer. I really like that IP, but I understand it. I get it. it probably didn't sell super well. Um, what I don't like is that they're quote reallocating creative teams and resources within the Quebec studio to focus on more established IP. So that that to me is kind of annoying. That's where it's like, hey, we're gonna put more people on more Assassin's Creed, and I love Assassin's Creed, but sure. I'm like, sometimes what makes your company trustworthy and awesome is that you are spreading resources out to tackle a bunch of different types of things and i don't know i yeah not a bunch of different types of assassin's creed games but a do- <laughs> right a bunch of different types yeah. of games i heard y'all period. wanted assassin's creed so i put yeah. assassin's fair, creed they're assassin's doing, so we got five know, like, coming out <laughs> to be fair they're doing uh avatar cry or whatever that game's called yeah uh, yeah, yeah avatar avatar cry avatar cry, yeah, avatar cry. Avatar cry. <laughs> uh wow that's, that's so that's stupid so but i love it <laughs> I, I kind of wish they would just call it that. They should just call it that. But that's a bummer to me. Uh, but I do rec- still recommend that game to people. It's so cheap. It's on sale all the time. And the DLC is kind of like a mini version of that game. New characters, new setting, and Chinese mythology. And, you know, it's very cartoony and lighthearted, but uh, very fun. I, th- I, I really like the Immortals game. So um, CD Projekt Red is going to be laying off some folks. When you see that, it makes you nervous at first, but I guess they kind of get it. They were very open about this. They said they were assessing their teams in the company in terms of like expected contribution as they look forward over the next year or so, and they were like, hey, as they're finishing these tasks, we already know that there's not a whole lot we have for them to put on their plate for this next year, so they're doing they're cutting about 9% of their team to kind of keep it, to keep their budget lean. I totally understand that. It just sucks to hear that um yeah, it's about 100 people it sounds like so um that's a big team by the way that means they're about a thousand people yeah, the, yeah. The i didn't realize they were that big percent and it's a hundred people yeah big that's a bigger fan. company i thought they were yeah. smaller than that um me too but uh but yeah um it doesn't sound like it's affecting any projects it's more like they finished what we need them to do and we don't have anything for them yet so we can't it sounds like it. phantom liberty is done for a lot of that's kind of what the vibe i got yes. was this is yeah. phantom liberty folks yeah um who knows? All right. We already talked about Sea of Stars launching on Game Pass and PS Plus Game Catalog. So Game Catalog is... Okay. There's PlayStation Plus Essential Games. That's available right. for all subscribers. Right. Then there's 
Then there's the, and it's actually called this game catalog. And those are your downloadable PS4 and PS5 titles for extra and premium tier members only. So thanks, Sony, for keeping it simple. Um, You're welcome. Appreciate that. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, and don't, Says please, Jimmy, you don't need to show up. We're not talking about you anymore after this. That's it. <laughs> He's uh, got the CPAP on. So he's got the, yeah, the CPAP VR machine. Come out. Um, <laughs> DreamWorks All-Star Kart Racing, speaking of kart racers, has been announced. It's going to feature a variety of DreamWorks movies, characters, including Shrek, Trolls, Kung Fu Panda, Boss Baby, Madagascar, How to Train Your Dragon, Puss in wow. Boots, Bad Guys. There's, they've got a pretty big stable of characters to pull from for this thing. Yeah, I've really underestimated DreamWorks' character uh catalog i guess like their roster uh, is bigger than i uh, yeah their roster is yeah. insane yep. i also think it's funny that all these kart racing racers are popping up and I, I think they announced another nickelodeon all-star brawl too they did there's yeah, a, a sequel there's so a new it's, yeah, another brawl. Yep. game with a crap ton of characters in it yep like, yep. This is the new fad, I guess we're in. Speaking of Nickelodeon, uh, the developers of this DreamWorks kart racing game, it's Bam Tang's Bam Tang Games, and they're the ones who made the Nickelodeon kart racer mm. games before. Ah, okay. So I they've got some experience vaguely. with this with these types of games. I never really played those. Me neither. I think I had like SpongeBob and all that kind of stuff. Mm. No, I, just, I just never played those. Um, so there you go, another kart racing game. Speaking of kart racing, Disney Speedstorm Season 3 launches uh, this week on August 1st. It's adding Minnie Mouse, Lilo, and Stitch, and I would Sweet assume Sweet some other bitch. stuff. Um, last but not least, and sadly, but not... I don't know, I'm not always sad by a delay. So sometimes a game delay makes me super bummed. Sometimes I'm fine with it. It's just, it's all about context. Like, how big is a team? What's the game? What's the scope of it? Um, how long have we been waiting? Have they been yanking our chain around a bunch? You know, sometimes you feel like Skull and Bones. I'm starting to feel like Ubisoft, you guys are the worst because your team is massive. How are you not getting this right? You've done yeah. both games before. It, a lot of that's very No kidding. Um, <laughs> but this games. is this is Aiden Chronicle 100 <laughs> Heroes, a super small team with veterans from so many good RPGs in the past, including the Suikoden End games, and it's definitely a Suikoden End one and two spiritual successor. Um, and they've already got they, according to the update, the recent update, they had to delay it to Q two of twenty twenty four, and a lot of that has to do with essentially characters and dialogue. And they're just like every, and he, he even got into the details of like when you go to to a town to talk to a character, we want to make sure that they're talking about the world and the lore correctly. And so yeah. they're just like wording yeah. everything. I was like, and I, as soon as I heard that, I was like, take all the time you need. I'm going to love yeah. this. Like, I, I can't stand when you go. It, it, yeah. When you play an RPG or something and like, they're just not, the characters are just not acknowledging things like changes uh -huh. that happened or situations like that. Just exactly. I, it's annoying. Like, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So that's awesome. He said the story um, and overall kind of like gameplay and feel, that kind of stuff for the main game, as well as the DLC they're already planning, uh, mm -hmm. is all set. It's just a matter of a lot of the dialogue and the details and then fine-tuning. So they, they need until next spring um, or early summer to get that one out. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Cool. Uh, all right. I want to ask for any updated thoughts on Remnant 2. And I know Kyle's not here. Yeah. He's probably been playing it the most, but a couple of you, Jeff and Derek, he's are been also playing, playing it. it. Oh, I haven't gone back to it, which we is okay. kind of disappointing considering how much I paid for it. But uh, <laughs> Kyle <laughs> talked about he's, pro yeah, he's, Dude, he's been, loving like, it. Several now. bosses in, and he is like only doing co op. And it sounds like he's having the time of his life with it. Yeah, he's well, that would be sense. that would be my updated impressions. And I talked about it last week, um, but it got worse. Like when I try, I was trying to play the game solo, mm -hmm. and it's just not fun solo to me. I mean, maybe there are rock stars out there that are like, I don't need anybody to help me, and I can beat everything. Great, more power to you. I'm not good enough at this game. I don't know the worlds and the systems as well as I know Souls games. So that obviously could play a part in why I suck solo. But I just didn't find it to be fun. And even in the back and forth with with Sasan and text messages, like he actually completely quit the game. He's like, it's just BS. I'm like, well, I really feel like this is a co-op experience. You really should just try it with other people because... I ended up staying up one night, and this is on a work night, so this is actually a big deal that I did this. I stayed up till like one in the morning, and I have to go to bed at at latest eleven because I have that meeting at six a.m. So I actually actually 
texted the people in that 6 a.m. meeting. I was like, <laughs> I'm feeling really sick, having trouble <laughs> sleeping, so I'm not going to make it to the meeting. I'll talk Doesn't to you guys before. at 8 yep. because I had paired up with two guys in the co-op that were awesome to play with, and that's been part of the problem too. So I feel like it's more of a co-op game. But then I was trying to play co-op with people, and I don't have any friends on PC. I don't have friends in real life, but I don't have friends on PC. So I'm completely trying to play this with, like, randoms, which for Destiny, that works. For a lot of the games I play, it works. They'll, they'll jump in a game. You don't have these issues. In this game, there's been so many issues trying to co-op with people. Um, not connecting. The game runs flawlessly connecting. But, like... Just the people you get paired up with is just a lot of them are complete trash and they'll boot you out right away. <laughs> and because it's a difficult game, you lose a lot. And when you lose, they just give up and they quit right away. I'm like, we could have. So you can't you know, get into a groove and get. Yeah, we could have. I hear like, you. Give us a give us a give us a shot here, dude. So the two guys I was playing with, we lost to one boss like two or three times, but we kept going. We beat that boss. Then we went to the next one, beat it, beat it. And we just went through uh, where we knocked out four or five bosses and we were knocking out areas. So my impressions, my updated impressions is this game is really, 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 really stinking good if you have a co-op partner. Mm. If you're Mm. not, unless you're willing to get like literally get good this game is really frustrating solo they Mm. will overwhelm you the enemies will overwhelm you in like two seconds like the normal enemies you're fine you get in any boss battle all the bosses i i fought they always have um other enemies that they spawn and those while you're trying to fight a boss it just ends up overwhelming you when you're playing solo because it's already hard enough playing co-op and I don't feel like they lessen the difficulty that much when you're solo. It's like a and balance. Then you have, yeah. So, and I, I think part of it was the class I picked too. I said last week that I, I went with the, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's a gunner essentially. Um, but I guess the best solo class is the one I think Jeff ended up going with ultimately. And that's the one with the dog, yeah. you know, cause that dog, is kind of like a co-op partner in a sense. So that, that to me, that's a flaw. That's, that's if I'm a reviewer, I knock the game for that. Like, Oh, I have to pick a certain class because you make it really ridiculously difficult. If anybody picks outside of that, that's kind of stupid. Um, But overall really, really good game. I didn't even know this. It's an unreal engine five game. Um, and if you play the original remnant, this is not a team that's like, we are state of the art. We make the most beautiful games. So this is not the most beautiful game. But one of the things that I did notice before I even knew it was Unreal Engine, I was like, this looks way better than it should for a remnant game. And then I found out it was Unreal 5. And I'm like, I bet you this is like the bare bottom of what a good looking game will look like. I'm excited Unreal for the future 5. of that, man. Yeah, because the the level of difficult uh, difficulty, level of detail, and the lighting, and I was watching one of the videos that was pointing out all the lighting that this game does and how detailed it is and stuff like that. I was like, man, that's probably what I'm noticing subconsciously, and I'm not fully aware. I just am like, oh, this looks really good, but I don't know why. It's that mm-hmm. type of stuff, I guess, the Unreal Engine Five does, but. Really good game, super fun, but again, it's more of like a party game. If you've got a crew, absolutely buy it, play it with your crew. Randoms, uh, I agree with Kyle, maybe wait a little bit, and once the noobs drop off and you get the really good players that want to help you out, then you'll have some fun with that. But if you're looking for a solo experience, you know, maybe I didn't give it enough time, but I did. I I played it a lot solo, and I just was like, I'm not getting better at this. I'm getting more and more frustrated. That's about it. Okay. And it's very Souls-like. The last thing I'll say is maybe this is where the solo part comes in. Yeah. It's very Souls-like that they want you to replay things over and over to level yourself up before you go fight a boss. Whereas most of us as gamers we're like i went through that level i got to that boss i should be 
ready for that boss. Yes, I'm okay with you be challenge for it to be challenging, but I don't want to have to redo this level 17 times to feel like I have a shot because I've now leveled up 17 times. Um, that's kind of how this feels. That's how I played Bloodborne, where it was like, okay, I'm just going to redo this over and over until I get to a high enough level that I can pe- compete with this boss, and I think that's kind of how this this game is. I think it's built like that. I was trying to find that uh, guy on Twitter who posts videos of... I shouldn't say guy, could be girl. I don't know. Uh, this person so, on Twitter who posts videos of himself fighting these boss battles, they usually do Souls games, but they'll do it all kinds of games. Oh, they did Final um, Fantasy 16. And they're Surrey they're, Legend? Yes. Is it yeah. Suni Legend? Suni Legend. Suni Le- yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, and he doesn't get they're, touched at all. They're yeah. amazing. That they're person so is good. Amazing. And they, but they also they get rid of the, the HUD, so it's just this... Yep. Yeah, beautiful fight scene. They do it with Elden Ring and Sekiro and all kinds of games. They're just in there, and they use, but they use all the moves, and it just is like, dude, I didn't know this game. And they was like this move good. the camera around, like when yeah. they're doing like certain. It's oh, amazing. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So I just wondered. I, as soon as you started talking about the difficulty soloing, I was like, if anyone can do it, it's Sunni Legend <laughs> is going to have some Remnant Two content at some point, but maybe not. Uh, they don't do every game, but uh, they definitely. No, they probably at, will. At these it's a games. really good game. Um, I, I, I'm going to keep playing it. It's a great okay. co-op game, but obviously with the wave of games coming in August, it's not one that I'm like, I must beat it. Whereas most Souls games, I'm like, I want to beat this. You keep pushing, like, I'm not, yeah, I'm well, not going to walk away. Take us into anything else you're playing. We'll call this your other quick hits uh, outside of Remnant 2. What else are you playing or watching? Do you want to highlight? Yeah, uh, real quick, I would, I would say I still haven't touched Pikmin 4, so that was pointless. <laughs> Thanks good purchase. Good purchase. Great, great decision. Um, <laughs> the main ones. <laughs> God damn it, guys. <laughs> we hate Nintendo. Confirmed. Well, that's what it is. I did jump into Ratchet and Clank uh, on PC. You won't I play Pikmin it. 4, but you're playing the Ratchet and Clank PC port. All right. Yeah. I already so beat good. it on PS5, so I'm not going to beat it or anything, but I definitely wanted to see what it looked like and how it ran. And of course, I knew my PC would be able to handle it. I just wanted to see like how good it looks this game is absolutely gorgeous one of the best looking games probably ever um obviously there's different art styles and everybody likes but this one's really 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 good um i'm not gonna beat it like i said just wanted to test it out so i thought i would just mention it it works fine looks looks great it's a great port on the pc digital foundry has a gazillion for some reason I'm in several pony groups and this is like the biggest topic. And that is like, see guys, this game couldn't run on a PS4. Yeah, I've been seeing those videos. Yeah. Dude, yeah, who SSD's freaking though. cares? Who <laughs> freaking cares? And digital foundries made like 17 videos to be like, here guys, look, <laughs> it really can't run on a PS4. Who cares? People um, care. It, People do care. I don't care. So, uh, <laughs> game looks <You> good. <laughs> I really I just think they should have removed even saying like just be like just don't run it on an hdd like just don't run it yeah. on a hard drive it was like, all it was all the only please just run it on care, solid state agree like, it was it was <laughs> all that marketing from sure. sony yeah. that yeah. is like our ssd there was actually the thing well it turns really out they were was, in my opinion i think they were right though because they were right yeah. what they were what you're seeing on hard drive is like look at all the stutters look at like the the seven I'm, I'm talking about like digital foundry stuff uh yeah. look at like the stuttering and like how long the load times are like just don't even do a hard drive bro like just don't <laughs> like, you're not going to get a good experience well um, what i actually would have liked for them and maybe they did do it and i didn't watch it is there was people that were saying that it wouldn't work on an xbox series x ssd so if huh. that is true i would like that's what they w- should have really answered because oh. that was the big console war back and forth Xbox is more and powerful. Oh my gosh. It's stupid. such a my dad could beat up your dad argument. And then it really is. like, well, you can't so run stupid. Ratchet because our SSD is so much Hey, faster. don't forget the flops. Don't forget the flops. Oh, the teraflops. Oh, the T-flops. The T-flops. Yeah. Yeah. I'm embarrassed way, on behalf of all gamers when these become legitimate, like, emotion-driven <laughs> arguments. It's just like, I joke about it, but when I hear people, like, people get legit fired up about this. It's a dick measuring but contest. Dude, if you, go, if you go watch, like, yeah. a lot of Digital Foundry's, like, comparisons, it is extremely minute whenever they'll say, like, Xbox runs better than PS5 or PS5 runs better than Xbox. And I'm like, dude, 
the marketing was Xbox is the most powerful console ever, and yet you can barely beat PlayStation if you even beat them on most games. And then sure. PlayStation's rebuttal was, well, because of our SSD being so awesome that we'll be able to push <laughs> graphics better than Xbox. Dude, it's it's like, the same no, you guys are literally doing the same but thing. But PS3 right? and 360 did storage. it. Something just related to storage. Like, it's just like storage is not where games get their power. That's so interesting to me. That that's yeah, the well, and It's the PS- about lo- preloading it. into the SSD. Okay, well, maybe it's the way it's like fragmented. I don't yeah, know. Like, a PS3 listen, was apparently listen, a piece listen, to develop for. Listen, Jimmy I'm woke sorry, up. Jim. All right. I'm sorry, Jim. He, I'm sorry. he overheard. He was he sleeping. You he guys almost woke up from his. He, he <laughs> said, like, What did you guys... say about that PS4? Yeah. He What'd said, You guys were coming PS4? across very condescending. All right. Very <laughs> no, condescending. Are, I agree with right. that. Jim's right. The, 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 great, <laughs> the greatest machine on the planet. All right. We got we got Spooder Man 2 coming out. All right. We got Spooder Man. <laughs> all right. The 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 non racist Final Fantasy game is exclusive talk about... to our console. Okay. Uh-huh. Why don't we talk about uh, the fact that you your uh, covers for your console are already getting scalped? Why don't we talk about that? That I have uh, to pay two hundred dollars if I want a Spider Man console cover. You want to address that, Jimmy? You piece of uh, shit. He's going back to bed. So <laughs> he's, all right, he's Jimmy. Asleep now. All right, good, goodbye, <laughs> Volcano High. There, Jimmy. All right. Good all right. Bye, so, Volcano. anyways, uh, the only other thing that I'm playing is um, uh, I'm still playing Scarlet Nexus. Um, I'm getting towards the end of that, so I'll, I'll probably beat it. Maybe this week. It depends on my work week. Okay. Um, I, I really do enjoy that game. I still think it's one of the best action RPG. I'm talking about gameplay only games out there. Uh, story's decent, but the way it's told is terrible, but we've talked about that before. And also, the other thing that's really, really bad, and I'm not going to spoil it in case any of you decide to play it, is the villain. Villain's name is absolutely terrible it's an acronym I don't even remember it's babe the acronym oh, is babe sure so they just good. keep saying so babe is doing this to us and i'm like what like, babe, babe, no. babe 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 listen listen babe, babe. listen babe. listen <laughs> listen so anyways i'm that's that's uh, the main main games i'm playing and then okay. i already talked about the expanse i i watched through season one and I don't think I've really watched any movies. Again, this week's been super- other than TMNT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dan, what about you? What do you got going on? Uh, so I, I jotted one thing down there, but real quick, uh, real quick, I'm still enjoying uh, Chained Echoes. I think I'm pretty close to finishing it. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, okay. I think I have less than ten. How long hours. of a game would you say it is compared to uh, other RPGs? In how game? long? How long the beat says? I think like thirty, thirty-two. Okay. Uh, and I think I'm around like the twenty three hour mark so okay um and i i just got to a point where uh something kind of opened up that's really fun which it like very reminiscent of some older games like um kind of reminds me of uh suikoden a little bit i I, at least i think you you got my attention I, I'm trying not That's to be why like, he did specific. It. He, he's actually lying. It has nothing to do with it. It's nothing. No. <laughs> well, it's it's basically like a place where you can like recruit people. Oh, all right. I, I love that shit. <laughs> like, I love I, that uh, too. Um, you recruit so, them and then you can, Okay, all right. I'm yeah, on board so with that. I'm like in the beginning stages of it, so I haven't seen it blossom yet, so I don't know how in depth it is. But like <laughs> the second that happened, I was like, you have my attention. You have my attention. All right. Um, so yeah, that game it's really fun. I'm still really enjoying it. Um, and then Xeno Gear. So I, I came back to streaming because I took a break because of Final Fantasy 16. Um, and I started. I did uh, Xeno Gears all all week this week. Dude, that game is effing bananas. Like this is a PlayStation One RPG that like story wise, like they go some places. They it would not be allowed now, I think, like <laughs> probably right, like legitimately like the, there was a there was this big like lore dump scene where we infiltrate. We went into like this like church thing and then like we walked in. So there was this new character that joined the party, Billy, who's like a priest, but he has guns, which is badass. Um, he's <laughs> also sick. Si- he's also 16. All right. So keep that in mind. He's he's 16. Right. And at one point he mentioned something about selling his body in order to help. Uh, him Dang. and his little sounds sister like because, my type of church. I don't because remember that the dad had left, so it was just him and his little sister. So in order to like be like meet ends, uh, make ends meet. So like he says that I was like, hold on, 
he's 16, right? Let's just move past that anyways. Um, and then there's like a part where like, then you thanks, go back Japan. to the church. Yeah. Thanks. Japan. Well, then, then there's the, the, you go back to the church and everyone's just like been shot up. So then you, you, you infiltrate the place and you go down to this basement and all this stuff starts happening where it seems like it's a front for like the, the civilization that's like somewhere that I, I'm trying to also be a little vague, but like this guy shows up and he's talking about the priests it, it, that's part of the ethos, which is like the church. And, and they kind of basically hint towards like the, the priests doing unsavory things to the people that come to the church nice. looking for help. So it's like, Whoa. priests would never do that. Yeah, this is so <laughs> unrealistic. No, I, but like thinking about this as a PS one RPG, I like never playing uh, this game, but I must have skipped so much dialogue. So I remember being like, this is nonsense, nonsense. Not there's like I just so skipped. much dialogue. Too. So much, <laughs> so much. It, yeah. this honestly feels like a Kojima RPG. Like if Kojima made an RPG oh, back oh, in the yeah. PS one, like that's what it honestly feels like. It's it, yeah. the, in the story. I'm, I'm not talking about just, the amount of dialogue but the actual like the way the story is told and like the craziness that's happening it feels it very a little fever dreamish by the end it's really weird yeah. at the end. um so it's it's bonkers i, I am yeah. really enjoying it but i definitely have my gripes with it for sure um yeah. it, it definitely has its like classic rpg frustrations of like all right where the hell am i supposed to go next like oh, yeah. this, this, there's not a lot of good like indication of like you need so to go when are you when you're streaming do you like look up where to go or do you just wait for I somebody to tell yet. you or no i've i've uh i've basically figured it out pretty much every time it's just taking me a bit um but i'm also like reading chat so it's like it's taking me a while to beat the game but yeah i've i've been pretty i've pretty much figured things out more or less it's just i'm walking around a lot which is kind of frustrating um makes you appreciate it, the checkpoint kind of system we have now or like the the mission point like go over here yeah. okay good i'll go over there or just the way games are structured now sometimes where yeah. it's a little smarter about telling you where to go um oh, yeah, and how, exactly. how it's written and everything i still think ghost of sushi had one of the best uh where it yeah. just kind of the wind blows you in the direction yes. you're supposed to yeah, go. Yeah. i still love that but. um but then the last thing real quick so actually this so you post these episodes on monday Mm -hmm. On Monday, I'm doing a one year anniversary uh, streaming anniversary fun explosion. All right. Uh -oh. That's oh, okay, that sounds sexy. That does not it's sound very, good. Sounds it's very very sexy. Bring tissues. Um, All right, so what are you going to be streaming during this uh, one year anniversary? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's going to be a 12 hour stream. I'm starting Ooh. at noon. All so right. noon to midnight um, and va various things. So there'll be community games, which is basically multiplayer games of Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Uh, I, played, some I played some of the uh, like trivia stuff you had on there yeah jackbox games uh maybe some Fortnite, but i'm gonna i'm gonna start up super mario uh 64 because the last nice. mario game i finished on stream was uh about world i i actually was replaying it the other day just to kind of like let me just pop back into it and reacquaint yeah. myself with the controls it's like it's definitely doesn't feel as smooth as uh odyssey for sure but yeah <laughs> but it's still fun it's yeah no harder. it's definitely very fun yeah, yeah. um so yeah. i'm gonna play some of that i'm gonna start my final fantasy difficulty playthrough of 16. Okay. Um, okay. I'm probably I'm probably going to open up with that, actually. Um, but, yeah, I might play also Subnautica because uh, a couple nice. of people uh, mentioned Subnautica being super rad. And I was like, let me give it a try. It was on sale the other day for like 10 bucks. So I bought it. Um, so I'm just going to play various things and then community games and some stuff. So nice. So, yeah. All right. Make sure you guys tune into that. That is if you're listening to this on Monday right now. Uh, and yeah. if you missed it, that's all right. Go check out uh, Dapper underscore Chocobo for other Twitch streaming opportunities coming up. Uh, I'll wrap it up. So, Jeff, what do you got? Oh, buckle up, guys. We're going to be your... No, we're not. Um, <laughs> so, I... I'm buckling. <laughs> I, buckle. I uh, as far as, like, the Blu-ray rewatches have been going, uh, which I still have been loving seeing movies, what feels like for the first time in a long time, mm. uh, in new color and everything. Um, I rewatched 2001. I don't know if you guys have seen that. But the opening happen. for Barbie got me in the mood to watch 2001 because the opening of Barbie is literally the opening oh, with, of 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's like monkeys, like uh, in, in 2001, it's monkeys like using a, I think a bone. Yeah, mm. I think it's a bone to break things. Like they're learning how to be destructive and use and use weapons. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, I still love that movie. It's just I feel the slowness in it every single time I watch it. Maybe the first time viewing is different. Maybe it's like holy crap, look at this set design, and this is the 60s, and look look at the gravity they were able to play with. Like, mm. the rotating... You remember the rotating hallway from Inception that Christopher Nolan yeah. actually made? Yeah. Kubrick was doing that in the 60s with 2001, 
where he's having these giant like hamster wheels turn and his actors are like running in place, but the camera makes it look like the actors are running in a circle and it's really freaking bananas, uh, even by today's standards. Anyway, yeah. I love that. Movie. Um, Invincible had a special. I still highly recommend the hell out of that show. The special is like a prequel for one particular character voiced uh, by uh, Britta. Was Jillian it Adam Yeah, Adam Eve. Yeah, um, and that's great. I mean, the whole Invincible is just amazing. I can't recommend that series enough. Uh, and then I watched some comedy specials. I watched the Alpha Comedian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey uh, It turns out that a lot of his bits I already watched on TikTok Dang. just scrolling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, ah, oh, damn, I already saw that. But like, he They're is just YouTube so funny. Me, but yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. it's like the same thing. He's um, so socially awkward when he engages the crowd. Yeah, like, when they answer him and he doesn't know how to respond, he'll be like, okay. Uh. <laughs> he's just he's one a, of the He's, he's a one naturally of the best funny person. Comedy, like, yeah. comics, yeah. like, period, right now. He's just so freaking funny. Um, and just the way he throws things back to, like, I think somebody shouted something at him, and he's like, no, we don't do that here. I'm alpha. Don't you see the sign? Yeah. Like, he's just... <laughs> Just the way he's able to throw things out, back out, at, out at the audience. stuff like, he was he, saying, like, with his mom in the crowd. Like, he's like, my yeah. mom and dad are here. And then he starts doing, like, sex jokes right. with his mom. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, I know. Dude, I, I was love, embarrassed cro- for him. I but. love crossing lines, but this is, like, this is weird. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Actually, uh, most of his jokes that push the limit, I was like, his mom is still there, I think. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, he's just, uh, his he's material great. is just tops, dude. And then I watched two other comedy specials that were, like, not my favorite, but they were still good. Uh, Mark <laughs> Norman's Nar- Mark Norman's new special on Soup to Nuts, uh, soup called Soup to Nuts, was on Netflix. And um, it was pretty funny. He's, it was okay. I don't know. I finished it. I didn't something think it was, about his delivery okay. that just doesn't really click for me most of the time. Mm. He's but funnier on podcasts, I think, as, like, a yes. first deal on a yeah. podcast. He's really funny in that setting, but God, I, I, it's really disappointing when comedians are like just so much better in, at being a personal human being <laughs> that's genuinely funny in the moment than when they actually sit down to write comedy. I just, yeah, I feel like when he got up to those jokes, it felt like uh, like he I think he riffs off of people super well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just didn't. I, I mean, he's on the, on his own. I don't know. I just didn't think it was yeah. amazing. It was fine. It was fine. It was. It was, it was fine. Like. I liked some of the raunchier, like crossing the line jokes, because just his delivery was like great for that. But it wasn't the whole special, so I mean, yeah, it's very like though. I, I like his personality. Yeah, yeah. And then Jim Gaffigan's new special was like a whole big bag of like meh to me. Um, yeah. And his last special was actually very funny, um, not from beginning to end, but like it was very funny. So this one to be kind of like, oh, those you're making jokes about like bells, really? That's where we're at with your career. <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> He's still bells. a very funny person. Like I listened yeah. to him on Bill Burr's co- podcast before I watched the special, and I was like, "See, he's just a genuinely funny guy." And I know he's got writing chops, and his wife does too because they write his specials together. Um, it's just not every special is going to hit, and you know, no, I, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's still a funny guy to me. Did you see yeah. John Mulaney's uh, newer special? Yeah, Baby J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. But yeah, it the, felt like the, the like alpha a therapy guy, session a little bit too. Yeah, it, it really did. did. Well, he went through some stuff. So. I, I know he did, yeah. and I, I yeah. love that one actually. The, the no. alpha yeah. guy Jeffrey Asmus or whatever, yeah. uh, he's definitely like he's got my number, dude. I See, mean, got like him, and then before him, it was Shane Gillis, who seemed like out of nowhere. I was like, these guys are hilarious. Now, yeah, Where that doesn't mean I'm from. It's yeah, crazy. It doesn't mean that like they're now my favorites. It's more like these specials, like this collection of jokes they currently have, really good. And it's like, I don't know if the next ones are going to be that good, but I love their delivery, their personality style. That would be my, uh, not concern, but like curious, like, because for me, I think he's funny. I think he's funny, but I think his thing's funny because I I like the whole alpha beta thing. And (laughs) the reason I think it's funny is because he knows he's a beta, but he tries to talk like he's an alpha. And he'll even joke about like, that's something a beta would do right there. You know? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. But then like how long can that stick be funny so like right. if he did it like on his next special or something people would be like Dude, yeah i think it's a one-off off. yeah yeah it's, it's a, to me it's a one-off so that's why i'm curious I mean, unless like, you're jim gaffigan he does the high-pitched crowd voice always oh, yeah he hasn't been doing that in a while now he's switched to just doing it the old-fashioned way that comedians do it where it's like i bet you're thinking why is he still talking about it? and i'm like what what? No, he used to just switch to the internal monologue. He used to switch to the internal yeah, voice. Yeah, I kind of miss it now. It's 
I, I he did it for like five time. specials in a row or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It was a lot. Um, but yeah, he's You're right, though, Derek. It's it'll be interesting to see uh, what he does. And he's not a big name. Like, he's, no. he does like clubs that little, have like 50 clubs. people really in small. it. So. Yeah, he does. He's come in here to like the Dallas Comedy Club. And that even if you can't tell by the name of it, it's actually really small. Like, it's very, very small. Uh, so he's not selling. I mean, he'll, he'll probably sell that out because it's. It's a small venue. It's called, it's called a go? very small club. Is that what it's called? Very yes. small club. <laughs> Probably not. It's not. I very don't like going to downtown Dallas unless I'm actually playing a gig there. Like I just don't oh, like okay. going there. It's just horrible. I actually um, want to see him if he if he comes. To the I camera. really do too. I think he's I, only a couple of like big podcast spots away from like starting to blow up a bit. Like and that's kind yeah. of how someone like Shane Gillis started. He got on. You know, Rogan and some of these other podcasts that they start like and he starts to get Started that zone that yeah. heat a little bit. Um, so anyway, I, I, I would say that smart. He just released a YouTube special, though. I thought that was that was smart yeah. to just release it like yeah, he's I agree. a legit person. I agree. Agreed. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's I would say like, uh, you know, I've seen like probably a total of 10 specials um, and I would definitely put that one. The Jeffrey Asmus one like up there. It's like, good, man. Or something like that <laughs> made yeah. me laugh so hard. Um, it's up there with like Tom Segura's and Kyle Canaan's specials. Like, when he talks about taking so. his abortion jokes to term, I still die laughing. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I know it's 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 oh, bad. It's God. funny. <laughs> so hold on, what's the name of the special though? Uh, the only funny white man in the room. Okay, I think. all right. That's yeah. that's what I'm looking at here. I just wanted to make sure. I it's his only special. It. I need to a, finish it. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, he previously has released like clips of himself at these clubs. Very sim- Maybe it's the same club. I'm not sure. It looks like the same one. Um, and so, but if you watch any of those, if you've seen those, this is kind of a collection of all those in one. He just cool. randomly showed up. I think it's all the alpha beta stuff I post on Facebook. And Facebook <laughs> was algorithm. like, here, bro, yeah. here, here's your comedian. <laughs> and I remember watching a clip and going, I, this guy is a nobody and he's cracking me up like he's a somebody. Like, yeah. that's how I felt about him. Yeah. So I think I shared him with you guys. And I didn't expect any of y'all to even care. And oh, I think he's, I don't know. I, I think he's watching his really stuff smart. And I'm like, you oh, yeah. He's, keep he making me saying, laugh. You're really funny. No, man, he, he's got a, He's got a great grasp of like a good turn of phrase and a good, like, unexpected twist while also taking you where you expect to go. Like, he's very, very good. Um, yep. There's there's not a ton of like young comedians up and coming that I feel like have that they just have that factor of being yeah. naturally funny and clever. Again, I think him and Shane Gillis are in the same bucket for me personally, where I'm like, all right, those guys, I'll keep an eye on the next thing they do. There's plenty of other ones that I've I've already forgotten their names or any of their jokes because it's just there's so many that come and go. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. And even the classics, the guys that I've always loved, like I used to really love Brian Regan too. And I still think his, he's funny, but he just, his early specials were, I think some of the best of the all top, time. They were the best. Yeah. Like Brian Regan live might be one of the best stand up specials. I think ever. his Red Rocks, was it Red Rocks? There was one like shortly after the pin, not after the Bill pin, Burr, Bill Burr did Red Rocks, I think. Bill Burr, but I think Brian Regan did as well. He, he did. Uh, okay. I forget what it was called. It wasn't called Red Rocks, but it was, no, it, it was wasn't. there. I think it was called something else. Um, I he's that got, one he's, was quite good. Yeah, he's done some. He's still funny, with, but yeah. Same with Jim Gaffigan. Like after a while, you kind of get to know you get to know them so well as yeah. a comedian. It's really tough, I think, yeah. um, for them to to stay that funny. And even Bill Burr, yeah. one of my tops. Like after a while, yeah. I'm kind of like I know where he's going already with a lot of this stuff. Even when I saw him <laughs> live, I was like, I'm dying laughing, but I already it doesn't have that <laughs> same. The peaks aren't quite as high as they were when I first heard Bill Burr. Where I was like, "What is this?" You know what I, I mean? I enjoy like, I enjoy the journey Bill Burr takes me on. Even oh, if yeah, I've too. seen the me joke too, over man. and over, I'm like, "Dude, oh, yeah. keep doing it. I love it." I know. I just, he just I love, you, get to, rant, you just, get to rant on all the things. His I whole rant special, on. his whole bit about being a white guy going into Harlem and seeing like the white people disappear over the horizon. <laughs> yeah, as he, yeah, he starts crossing a certain numbers. threshold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh to go God. see his girlfriend now, yeah, wife. Yeah, girl. yeah, yeah. Very yeah. fun, very funny. Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry, Jeff. Was there anything else? I know we got off on comedians there. Oh Who no, knows? I was gonna add that I know he's like whatever canceled or taboo, but uh, Louis C.K.'s material. He's an example uh, of a comedian yes. who can be in the game for so long and continue to evolve his act to the point where it's like, I I really don't know what he's gonna talk about in his next special. You know, like yeah. it's always a really pleasant. So I didn't expect him to do a bit on the Bible, like. Sure, many comedians oh, have done it before. Yeah. But that bit was just so freaking funny. Just the it way was. his just the even just pointing out how much of the Bible was Jesus and then comparing it to like <laughs> and then the rest of it is just Jews walking through the day. And then like it's all 
he took, he took out the jersey, was, so he was so wrong. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> he's very creative. You got to give him that. He's one of yeah, the most. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And he but will like, just say you know, the he most. He used to just do jokes about his kids, and now he's like, shifted stuff. to other stuff. You know? Yeah, like he'll talk about a dead kid and doing something to it. <laughs> Dude, no, stop. he'll say some stuff oh, that I'm like, well, like, I can't tell anyone to watch yeah, this ever. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Like, he always yeah. finds a line and like goes over it and like into like a like way miles of oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, um. Oh, sorry. Was that it? I don't know if he had games or anything else. I was just hear. uh, my laugh was coming down. That's all that was. It was me going. <laughs> oh, oh. One of those. Okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> All right, so I wrapped up a couple games, small games uh, this week. Bramble the Mountain King, I played through and finished. Highly recommend that. Uh, has oh gosh. weirdly a couple of like a handful of boss fights, probably four, maybe five boss yeah. fights. They're not excellently executed, even though their design is great. Like the the music is and the visuals are all really good, but like it's not built to be a super sharp gameplay game. So. It's a little frustrating at times with some of the bosses oh where you're like, what is it you want me to do? Oh, yeah. okay. So it, it's really easy. It's not hard. It's just one of those things where it doesn't always do the best job of telling you, hey, here's a pretty intense gameplay moment where you have to dodge, hide behind a thing, yeah. pop out and shoot almost. Like it's it's a little surprising, but um, I still really, I mean, I really liked it a lot. It's a yeah. really, a really great um, dark fairy tale experience. I, lo- I loved that game. Dude, was- I love that game so much. And it's, uh, and to, if I could describe the to, to people that haven't played it, like the problem for me, at least with the game is it's not like a jump and you're immediately, it's not a precision platformer. So sometimes Ooh, when you jump, it's like delay. you wait a little bit <laughs> yeah, and then you jump. So yeah. there's a lot of boss fights where it's like, I have to jump here. But you have to like time it when they're swinging like an axe down or whatever at the right time, or else you're gonna die. They like, want okay. precision, but they don't give you per- precise control. Right, exactly. And that's that's something and it's that the, I think the lack of handholding you mentioned is huge too, because you do go into boss fights and you're like, "What do you want me to do?" And then you have what? to die like three or four times before you figure it out. And plus, you're playing a character who's like an eight year old kid, and he gets like <laughs> cut in half. You know, and you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's wild." Um, yeah, like there's even some quote unquote stealth sequences that there's really only one way through an area, and if you mess it up, they'll quickly eat I you. I hate, and... I hate stuff like that. <laughs> and it, again, it wants precision. You got to go on this exact timing and then yeah. jump when they've come around to this side. Now you can jump and make it across, but they don't yeah. give you precise controls. That's the only, that's to me the big negative is that um, I think it wants to, it builds tension in these wonderful ways. And part of me wants to be like, you could have just cut scene to this part. You didn't have to make me go through this, this True. section. Yeah. Um, but overall, really fun experience. I'd uh, never heard that music, that version of that song that the boss fight is like where it's like, yeah. And it's like a very different take on that. Not that different. Like, you know what it is, but I've never heard. It's chopped up in a weird way. It's chopped up in like more staccato somehow. And almost more epic. It's so freaking good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Um, Very, very bloody. Like this is not a kid's not, game. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> even though it's, even though you are a child in this, it's like, wow. Um, okay, and then I finished Dredge, which uh, is kind of this little fun fishing adventure. Yeah, mild RPG, just because you can upgrade stuff, I suppose. Um, but it's it's pretty fun. A little dark story they got there. At the end, there's a an unspoken decision you can make based on who you deliver your final couple items to and who you decide to like start that last little quest with it'll even tell you like this is the last quest you can do it's literally like 10 minutes from there to the end of the game it's not a big boss fight or anything like that uh and all the fishing is just uh timing based button presses basically so it's it's very basic it's very simple very relaxing i i like dredge a lot i see why i got the positive reviews it got for me it's like a a four out of five kind of a thing or maybe yeah somewhere in that range um it does what it's trying to do it's not perfect or anything but it's good um, and then I played this demo for the many pieces of Mr. Koo. And that was based actually on Sasan's recommendation. He was like, you got to check out this art style. Yeah. And uh, he shared that in our group. And I went and I was like, dude, this looks crazy. Almost like this. Like an acid trip, dude. Like It's an acid trip. It's like, think like Disney Fantasia sort of with like little bits of stuff it's, like it's, Pixar's soul type animation. I don't know. It's, it's all over the place, man. Um, and it's a very, very, very short demo. Um, with a tiny taste of what some of the puzzles might be like. Like, use this item in this place first, and then try that. I, like, it's a little bit of that point-and-click adventure kind of a game. But, I don't uh, know maybe... why I haven't played it yet. It's clearly, like, five minutes. What? 
I couldn't oh, carve yeah. out five minutes for this thing. That's yeah, so it's an incredibly short little demo. But the visuals alone, I'm kind of like, hey, well done. I think it's made by one guy with a couple of outsourced elements, I think, is what it looks like. Um, it gives me Ren and Stimpy vibes, actually. A little Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. yep it's yep. really weird. Um, it actually, the animation did remind me of something you might see from a, a Pixar short, for example, like before one of their movies. The way you have this little character who's very expressive and he gets a gift and he just wants the gift, but it keeps like it's out of his grasp. He can't get yeah. it. It's, it's that kind of a vibe. Anyway, it reminds um, me of like uh, those, you know, I watch way too many movies. It reminds me of like something of French people would animate. I'd, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm with like you. those indie, yeah. weird, colorful uh-huh. French movies, you know. Yep. They painted it like those French girls. No, um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the other new game I wanted to mention real quick is called Mr. Run and Jump. It is not a great title. I'll admit that to you. Um, <laughs> but it was apparently meant to be this kind of love letter to Atari way back in the day. And mm. so it, like the opening little prologue section is actually, it looks like an Atari game and it sounds like one. Like you're this gigantic set of pixels and you're jumping across these very like bland, blandly colored th- like obstacles, and then you get transported to this neon, crazy looking world. Um, it's very striking visuals. It's not going to work for everybody. I totally get that. Um, but man, it's a fun game. It's super precise. If you like platformers like Celeste, or even if you like the platforming segments of stuff like Ori, minus the combat, um, it's got a lot of that vibe to it. So Mr. Run and Jump, it's I think very, very cool little game. Um, and I did watch Barbie and Mission Impossible this past week. Got to go out, watch a couple of movies. I enjoyed both. I thought Barbie was really funny, and I think people need to stop taking stuff like this so seriously. I think it's super funny, and uh, I had no problems with whatever messages they wanted to get across because I didn't. I, I'm not going to be informed in how I view the world by a Barbie movie. So I just found it to be funny. I thought. <laughs> the act- uh, yeah, I might go actually see it because I went I, out I to thought- eat with. Go ahead, Go ahead. Finish. I was just going to say, I thought it was very funny. The actors had a blast, especially Simu Liu and Ryan Gosling. I feel like we're having so much fun in their Ken roles. Um, Margot Robbie, of course, is great, but I thought some of the actors around them really shined. I thought Kate McKinnon always makes me laugh. Uh, I think she's really funny. So I thought it was charming. And uh, if you, as long as you go with expectations of like, this isn't the most brilliant thing ever made. It's just a silly and and a good time and don't take it too seriously. I think you can have a good time watching it. Um, it's not for everybody, I suppose, but I don't mm. know. I thought, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fine. What, what were we going to say, Derek? I mean, I, I still think I won't like it, but I think I'm going to maybe go see it when things start to calm down in the theaters because yeah, literally still, that I still, still can't even top. go see Oppenheimer. Like yeah. everything's sold yeah. out. All of a sudden, um, theaters are popular again, huh? But I went out to eat. Yeah, it, dude, I went today and Same it was around here. crazy. Packed. Absolutely yep. nuts. Today. We had the last two seats for Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I went out to eat out. with my young adults group and everybody, well, most of them had seen it. And they're like, you've got to see it. I'm like, nope, I'm a hard no. And they just kept telling me how much like. It's like they don't like, even know you. Like, Do they not like, <laughs> know you? Like, so. I know they, you they kind of talked me into too. it. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give it a shot. I think I'll, it's very if silly. I, still wants to go. It's like I'll a stage through. play. Like I looked at like a stage play, uh, and it's very on the nose. And I don't know, man. I I thought it was fine. Um, even the way it ended, some people had some. I, I thought the ending was a little boring, if nothing else. I I didn't feel. I, I feel like at the very end, especially while we're kind of waiting for them to wrap it up. Yeah, there's kind of a. I don't think overly, it lived up. I don't think it lived up to the energy of the first two acts at all. An overly drawn out opinion. sequence at the very end, especially, is kind of like, oh, all right, we're doing this very emotional moment. Okay, but then I really liked the way it goes to credits, like the final line before credits. I was like, all right, that was clever. That's pretty clever what they did. I liked yeah. that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I, I liked it. I thought it was a funny movie. Um, Michael then, Sarah really tickled me in that movie. Dude, him as that. Alan, you're right. Was the you, you mentioned that when you talked yeah. About <laughs> He's so funny. He's a man. He he got a laugh across the whole theater every time he showed up on screen. He didn't have to say or do anything. It was just his kind of uncomfortable face. It's just his face. Yeah, he's just like surrounded by all the Barbies, and he's like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) He doesn't know what to do with himself. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Oh Um, man. So I don't know. As a movie that's supposed to be a caricature of everything, I thought it it was that. It was a caricature of lots of things, and it worked fine. Uh, I saw Mission Impossible. I thought it was really good. We saw it on 
um, my buddy Jake and I watched it on uh, in those seats that move and like vibrate. Uh, oh, D box, uh, the yeah. 4D, the 4 D, oh. the D box. Seats yeah, they call it in Cinemark. They call it D box, and I'm like, you okay. probably change the name because yeah, change that away from D box. <laughs> change the name a little bit. Put um, the in the box. box. Are and both of us kind of had the same thought. We were like, hey, that was interesting, and especially for a movie like Mission Impossible with lots of panning shots as the camera is like a, in a drone view or something and yeah. the seat kind of turns with it. Like some of that kind of felt like, ooh, this is interesting. Or like the opening sequence is underwater with these submarines. And so as it's going underwater, the, your seat sort of just subtly moves with it. I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm. Um, I didn't necessarily need it though for this two and a half hour movie. Like after a while with the guns reloading and shooting, everything's vibrating and moving. I was like, oh. <laughs> That's too much, dude. That's I, really, yeah. Especially I, I, that car chase scene is never I think, ending. I actually yeah. kind of liked it for the car chase scene. I think some people yeah. would hate it. Some people would yeah. absolutely hate it. I overall Sounds like thought, the ladies would like it. <laughs> vibrating all the time. Yeah. yeah. That's how. Yeah. That's I why thought, Fifty Shades of Grey and all its sequels sold out so much. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. like the 4D. Box it's showing. the 4D. Uh, <laughs> overall, I thought that experience, part of it was kind of fun. Um, if not, yeah. like, I wouldn't pay extra for this. It, it's only because I still had my Cinemark free tickets. Um yeah. That we went ahead. We're like, let's just do that. Why not? Like, let's just try it. Oh, um, when I saw Ninja Turtles today, I actually did see it in a D box theater, but it was only like it's only two rows that only are only a that couple those... seats in each theater have it. Yeah, yeah. So like, what's really cool oh, is those. sitting right behind those rows, and so like during the car chase scene in the movie, I could feel the rattling mm. of the chairs, but I wasn't being annoyed by the chair. Well, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah. So I thought yeah. that made for an actually pretty cool immersive experience. It's almost like so when we were near when, it, but not in the seat. Remember that's when the N sixty four added the rumble pack, and that was like yeah, this yeah. crazy new yeah. thing. Yeah. game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Um. So anyway, overall, as a movie, though, I thought it was. Uh, really good. It was really fun. Um, it wasn't my favorite Mission Impossible, but it's, it's somewhere in the middle of the full list of it's Mission in the Impossible. Middle for me. Right, right in the middle. Uh, and part two, like Derek said last week, could change that. There were certainly some parts that I was kind of like, this is so cheesy. But like, the Mission Impossible cheese, like when all the important people are sitting in the room explaining things to Carrie Elwa's character, you know, the Princess Bride guy. And he's yeah. sitting there looking out the window. and But he's listening like this he'll just kind of look to the side clearly not looking at them but listen to what they say and if someone over here talks and he goes like this and kind of looks this way to listen to what they say i was like this i is actually kind of hated that i i, the I didn't love that choices and the framing of the cameras and, i thought and it was that. a little bit it felt very 90s i was like i don't yeah. know about like everything else around like involving the scene like the content of it very yeah. very intriguing Right. And then what actually happens, which I think Derek saw it too, right? But also and what actually I, happens and how it leads the, into the opening credits. The, of the item movie. that they're all Title trying screen. to get, the super important yeah. pair, pair of items uh, that they're all trying to get. I was just like, I even said this to, to my friend Jake after we left. I was just like, was that supposed to be a placeholder? Because it looked like a Power Rangers toy that they were just like. <laughs> it did, and yeah. it has like these little glowing gems on it oh that God, light up when they get connected. I was like. This looks like a toy I bought at the dollar yeah. store for my five year old. Um, so I, I, those, those little elements. It's hard not to look at some of that and be like, "Eh, that's a little bit cheesy." And the idea that there's this one item that can control the super powerful thing. Like, yeah, all right. But I still, that didn't take away my enjoyment at all. I thought it was a blast. The set pieces were stunning, and uh, I am starting to see Tom Cruise's age finally in some of the close up yeah. shots. Yeah, that finally, was definitely geez. the first time I've seen him like really like. Whoa, dude, you're getting really. Let's see some of the the train fight scenes when the wind's pushing on his skin. I was like, hey, <laughs> the skin's getting loosened up, so it's flapping. I, I I may have said it last week, and if I didn't, I'll just say it real quick again. I don't want to ever watch a trailer for those movies again. I feel like the trailer it gives all ruined, the good stuff away. It yeah. ruined the experience for me on yeah, the there's cool There's a 45 stuff. minute build up before like when he gets on the bike and then he's right. finally like, okay, but everyone knows what's this. happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We know what's going to happen. I'm like, because you there's stuff it happening in between those scenes. So. It would have made yeah. for a great moment if we hadn't seen that like a million right. times on every exactly. trailer for this. If he uh, was like, if he had said, how am I going to get on the train? Well, maybe I got to jump. What up? Like if they had said it before, yeah. instead of this yeah. false tension, because they put it all in the trailer. So Agreed. I will say this, like, I, I liked Simon Pegg's character more probably in this one than most of the previous ones. I just felt like he yeah. felt, more in depth especially there's a part where he has to like talk about who means the most to him you know what i mean like there's just some moments that i was like i like him I more this time. i don't know i rewatched five before this one and f the fifth one is when tom cruise is uh, ethan is like uh considered what is it called when they disavowed he's disavowed yeah, yeah and yeah. and the cia keeps grilling uh simon Pegg's character like they're okay. constantly like putting him through lie detector tests and stuff and he's like oh i no, forgot about I that i don't know so like he's being yeah, yeah, yeah. grilled and then Tom Cruise is like at some point he goes, 
you need to go. This is no longer safe for you. The, the syndicate oh, yeah. is on us. And then, and then yeah. Simon Pegg has this really emotional speech about, no, I we're forgot friends. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a great so he, He's like the loyal buddy who's not yeah. a hero, but he's the Sam. He's the Sam yeah, right. for yeah. Tom Cruise's photo. I get it. Yeah, yeah. He's so good. He's so good. Um, he's so good he's just part. a good guy. So yeah. their, their, their dynamic together is awesome. You know, the actresses keep getting younger and staying pretty and all this, but Tom Cruise <laughs> keeps getting older. You know what's funny is Rebecca <laughs> Ferguson, you wouldn't guess it, she's... She's younger than Haley Atwell, so it's kind of like, oh, he went older. That's interesting. <laughs> Actually, that does surprise me. I thought you were going to well, say the, the characters they play seem older versus younger. But if you really look yeah. at them, they don't look that much different in age. But like no, you're right, no. Rebecca Ferguson's. Character, I would have guessed Haley Atwell was younger, and then I looked. She it just up she like, comes oh. across as the grizzled old veteran compared to the younger thief, who's kind of like yeah, happy go lucky. Yeah, I love her accidentally her weighing in, into that whole spy yeah. world yeah. i thought oh, that was a fun thing overall fun movie i'm excited to see what happens in, in in part two i am gonna plan on seeing that one um but yeah those are good summer blockbusters oh man we are it's not like a it's like a five out of five like some people are giving it like yeah. this is a perfect movie i don't think i don't think of it that way it's a um, four out of five either. for me but yeah i'm about i think i'm about the same spot yeah very good i do 0. 0.5 so it's a 4.5 out of five for me. A, Mm. That's fine. Mm. Um, we're fine. I dropped mine to three point five. Fine. We're all, Kermit, we're all Kermit the Frog all of a sudden. <laughs> no, that's mm. wrong. <laughs> Sorry, that's Jordan Peterson. Someday <laughs> we'll find it. That's Got wrong. It. You gotta, you gotta look up. He hasn't done it on Dudesy yet. I don't think. But you gotta look up Will Sasso doing an impression of Jordan Peterson because it oh, just okay. comes out as Kermit the Frog. And then he starts <laughs> saying things. Well, that's the meme, isn't Jordan it? Jordan Peterson isn't would that? say. Yeah, I have a meme with. Oh, like I guess it Kermit. is. That's Kermit's that. on Jordan's. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, then he starts saying things like Kermit. Kermit it's very Kermit. Like it's so funny, dude. Oh, my gosh. It's uh, wrong. All right, well, I'll close out this episode just recommending that you've got to see this Resident Evil video that Dan shared. I watched it <laughs> while we were recording. I mean, right? It's called... It's called The Best Gunfight in the History of Gunfights, Resident Evil Vendetta. And it is the funniest <laughs> clip of these two guys rolling around with the worst aim I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> They're right yeah. next to each other. What are they doing? <laughs> it's it's oh so... Oh, my God. Uh, I recommend that. I also recommend checking out Cartoon Bot on all video services, mostly on YouTube. Uh, this guy has animated some of the funniest stuff, like So I Tried Fortnite, So I Tried whatever. And he does a So I Tried Elden Ring series of videos that kill me it's so funny and the idea of course is that like you go in there and it opens up and he actually plays the legend of zelda breath of the wild music when you open the when you come out of the cave and it's just like mm -hmm. this vast thing to explore and this guy going to play elden ring of course same thing like wow and he just starts getting destroyed and it's so funny right, right, right. the way it's animated it's hilarious so i love the i love when they he goes to like the first boss i think i forget the boss's name and Mark he's gets, just there's a yeah, Mar Margaret, Margaret, whatever. Mar all, there's a million Margarets, uh, and uh, they and he's like cycle. At one point, he's cycling through his entire inventory, and you see it, coming <laughs> and he out. just starts screaming. Yeah, he's ah, and, like, his hand is changing like inventory, like. It's so funny. I like when the ambulance shows up, puts him on the bed, and then throws him off the cliff. I'm Pushes like, him off the cliff. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Uh, oh, that, it's, it's, I think my favorite the, bit was the video. The, uh, the videos continue. Like, that video was yeah. a compilation of, like, the first five minutes or so. But he has them, like, for way late. So if you've played a lot of that game, it some of the stuff he does about, like, Renala and other characters, like, it's so funny. Because it's, it's a nice way to, like spoof something that this person who made it clearly knows and enjoys mm -hmm. but they're just also poking fun at it i i love it I what love do you it. call those like little prayer or where you go to state of is a state of grace or whatever the, or? the site of grace mm -hmm. yeah 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 so <laughs> i love when he attacked the enemies got the loot and then went to the side of grace and the enemies were like oh like and immediately had to stop attacking yeah they, they were sounding the trumpet they the were right they there were chasing him. and then, <laughs> then he goes to the side of grace <laughs> They immediately stop, and the guy does like a one final toot on the trumpet or whatever. <laughs> the he other guy looks away. at him and he's like this. He's like threatening him, like he pushes his fist <laughs> into his hand. <laughs> it's, it's so because he's right there, but he, because he's at the side of Grace. Safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the rules of the game, guys. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Love it, love it. Anyway, <laughs> recommend those. Hey, thank you guys for watching and listening. Appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Peace.